Hi everyone, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, as always, I just want to say that if you are watching this over on YouTube, uh, we'd love to have you over here on the Twitch side of things. So if you'd like to watch any of these episodes live, we're live at twitch.tv slash games done quick. So, going into the theme for this week, um, we kind of looked at a lot of the early origins of horror last week, so I figured, why don't we look at one of the most popular tropes in all of horror, which is the spooky hospital, or the horrifying hospital, as you can see down below. Uh, we're going to be featuring a variety of games that all have hospitals to some degree, some more than others, but the general uh, area of fear this week is going to be on the medical side. So... This week we're going to be opening up with one of the oldest hospitals in all of gaming and one of the spookiest ones in one of the original horror games, Silent Hill with Punchy. All right, take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Punchy. This is Silent Hill 1 Good Ending. Uh, this would get the best ending in the game possible because it's slightly faster than getting the second best ending, which is funny that. And uh, about, like, two-thirds of this run takes place in a spooky hospital of some variety, actually. So I will get started with video games. Uh, count on three, I guess. Three, two, one, go. Why not? I never know how to start these, can you tell? Anyway, not skipping the opening cutscene because letting him walk forward is actually slightly faster than if you skip it immediately. That's my sole contribution to this game. Genius. Master Strat Finder. So the intro is a mostly canned sequence. Uh, Harry will mostly run automatically. Our goal in this opening is actually to die as fast as possible. I do not have the chat open. Hold that. There we go. Where are you going? We mostly have to pursue our ghostly hey, daughter Stop. as she walks through the fog. Also, forgive me if I'm tired during this. It's like 4 a.m. in the UK right now. If you hit this curb on the outside, rather than running straight into the alleyway. Harry's, uh, when you don't have control, he'll run further into the alley during that little cutscene than he otherwise would, which saves some time again. That's my only other contribution. I lied when I said I only had one contribution to this game. I have two. It's that. It's those two. <laughs> Collectively, that saves about a second and a half. Crazy. Wild contributions. Nice shirt, thank you. But this, this shirt was actually messing up the camera's <laughs> white balance before the stream started. Every time I leaned in forward, the camera went blue. Because it was trying it's to compensate for the ink. <laughs> it was trying to compensate for the bright pink hue of my shirt. Well, it is a nice <laughs> shirt in all fairness. <laughs> Amazing. It's great. Yes, our goal is to die here, and that is, unfortunately, kind of vaguely random. Ticks in this game don't deal damage evenly, and whether or not enemies feel What's like paying attention here? to you is bit up in the air, so I'm just going to strafe into enemy and hope I get grabbed, which, nope, I got, I got a nice stab instead. Hello? Hello? Thank you. One more, please. Thank you. Okay, Harry is dead. That is, yeah, well, that happens. And when you're doing runs for, like, PB and world record and stuff, when, when you die, when your death is slow, you just reset and try again, because it's, like, right at the start, but I don't have that luxury right now. Right, so during in the opening cafe segment, I've got to pick up the radio, the map. This health drink is optional, but I'm picking it up because it's a marathon and I might as well. You never know when you might need a couple of health drinks. Or I guess just one since I missed that one. <laughs> never mind. I'm not picking that one up. You know, I didn't I didn't want it anyway. Radio. I didn't want it anyway. What's going on with that radio? Who knew? Now we must defeat the first enemy of the game, which is an air screamer. This takes a random amount of shots. I think it's between like four to six or something. It's a, it exists within a fixed range. Enemies in this game, depending on the enemy type, most of them anyway, uh, roll between a range of HP values when they spawn in, and it's, it's just a purely random thing. Uh, so air screamers always take between four to six shots of the handgun to kill, on easy at least. They cannot fall outside that range. Albeit, uh, you also save time on that intro if the air screamer dies closer to the floor, because the cutscene does not start until it touches the floor. So right out of the gate, you got a little, you got a little variance going on. They got a little randomness, right? Now we need to find all the keys of the eclipse, which is a door in someone's house that exists for some reason. Uh, you don't actually have to go to the house to like find the map that shows you where all the keys are. If you already know where all the keys are, you just go and get them ahead of schedule. Uh, this is where 
your first real like taste of the movement takes place in this run. Silent Hill 1, if you are not aware, has somewhat unusual tank controls, even by tank control game standards. Harry walks with momentum. He kind of drives a bit like a car. He doesn't turn very easily. Like, no tank control character does, really, but he can't stop on a dime. Like, if you've ever played Resident Evil, right, you might be thinking, you can just stop, right? Like, the way Resident Evil works, when you hold a button down, you move forward, and as soon as you let go, you stop immediately. Harry does not work like that. Harry has to come to a stop. See that little stumble animation he did there? That's crucial. If you drive that over an item pickup and then press the button to cancel it, uh, you can cancel the stumble into an item pickup, which saves time. It's very complex, you see. Like, the, the movement in this game is a bit bizarre and kind of hard to get used to. Also, I'm gesticulating with one hand because while I'm doing these running sections, I really only need one hand on the D-pad, and I unfortunately have a habit of talking with my hat. Stop that. Stop it, streamer. You're going, you're going too crazy. Slow it down. This is a thrill ride. Going through a foggy street. get past this guy. Whether or not this air screamer takes a more keen interest in slapping me upside the head is also a bit random. Uh, see, mm -hmm. Aha, missed. Okay, baited. Got him around the corner. Smashing. One thing I learned you could do in this game, semi-recently actually, is that if you bind a, a button on the controller to the skip button, because this game has full controller remapping, which is really rare for PlayStation 1 games, uh, but if you bind a key to the skip function, which this game just has a dedicated, like, cutscene skip function, it's normally double-bound to the pause button, but you can unbind the pause button. I have no pause button right now. Uh, if you hold that button down while picking up items, it automatically draws in all text as soon as it possibly can. So I hold down X with, my like, the flat of my thumb, and then mash square with the other one. That's my actual action button. That's the controller scheme I've landed on to, like, most efficiently mash through text because you're allowed to do such a thing. There's that stumble cancel again. And there's that immediate text cancel with holding two buttons in. So it's all these little things, it's these little time saves. This is what you got to pay attention to when you're on Silent Hill. It's all little things, it's all little things. And speaking of little things, this is where I begin, like, my thesis on doors again. I haven't done this routine since, like, GDQ three years ago. Fascinating. Doors in this game are mysterious creatures that require you to master an individual ritual in order to open each one individually. This one requires you to stop running at around here-ish. Harry will stumble and land directly in front of the door, then you can cancel that stumble into a door opening. If you try and run directly at the door and don't stop, Harry will just face plant it. And you won't open the door, you'll bounce off. Some doors are kind to your face planting, like this one. Bonk. That's fine. You're allowed to do that. You get a pass on that one. Some doors will be like, mm, no, 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 no. I'm not feeling this approach, mate. And they'll like, they'll, they'll reject that. So you got, you got to be like more careful when you approach those doors. You got to approach them at angles that don't produce the bonk. And you like, which doors do that? You might be wondering. Hmm. I have no idea why it works the way it does. Just some doors behave like that. Some don't. Learn them. This is this is. <laughs> I made a whole tutorial for this game. You can find it on YouTube. Haha. <laughs> Uh, but where I where I laboriously explained the properties of each individual door <laughs> because there's really no other way to go about it You just have to learn <laughs> Individual door movements in this game if you want to save those seconds because if you're bonking a door you're losing time It's a little bit of time, but it adds up really fast So if you get all those doors right you save a lot of time over someone who's getting all those doors wrong And there's some doors like this one you just don't have to worry about like these, these are fine you just run into that one and you have doors like this, where if you approach them straight on, Harry will start to walk slowly as he approaches the door, losing time. But if you take a more curved angle, he won't begin to walk. And again, you save a little bit of time. That guy's wondering, okay, so now I'm going to do an enemy manipulation. Turn slightly to the left, turn slightly to the right. Bye-bye. That's remarkably consistent, given how weird it looks. It's not 100%, though. Nothing in this game is 100% consistent when it comes to enemy AI. Because uh, uh, enemy AI... Uh... Oh. Oh, good. Enemy AI in this game, every single time an, an enemy is spawned in a room, it picks a random facing direction. Do not use the health drink, that would be silly. And if the facing direction it happens to pick just randomly intersects with the pathway you want to take, then... <laughs> sucks to be you. So yeah, um, the one question I had though, since I know a lot of the old school PS1 games ended up having uh, differences, especially as technology advanced, uh, I think San Ho 1 both has control on the D-pad and the analog stick. Is it ever yes. preferential to use one over the other? And, like, what do you personally like to use when you play it? 
I use the D-pad for pretty much all movement, but there are certain portions where analog is faster uh, for puzzles. Like, in puzzles where, like, you get a first-person view and you control a cursor, the analog stick is strictly faster. It just moves the cursor faster for some reason. But you need to use it for those segments. But also, there are some lines that are... There are theorized movements that are faster and only possible on analog because you can take a finer angle with them. Oh, did that wrong. Okay, you have to hit the keys that don't make noise. It's a whole puzzle. You can't skip that cutscene sub like subsequent to the piano puzzle immediately. If you skip it frame perfectly, uh, Harry won't turn to face the metal post cutscene and you lose some time because of that. But don't skip cutscenes too quickly in Silent Hill 1 or you lose time. That is no good. Okay, this, this enemy is probably one of the more complicated ones. Walk a little bit, turn your light off, and then go, and you just you slightly pip the corner. It looks very tight, but it, it's remarkably consistent with that kind of timing. It doesn't seem like it's the sort of thing that would work most often, but it, it does for some reason. I don't really know why that works, if I'm being honest, but it does. All right, go into the basement. Turn the boiler on, yada yada. I have to wait for an audio cue here for quick turning, because I don't have control until now. It's like the low growl of the boiler turning on. Turn light off, walk one step, run. That'll get me past the corner pretty much every time. So far, so good. That's normal mode, uh, Midwitch Elementary. Now we enter nightmare mode, Midwitch, made famous by Dead by Daylight. By Daylight invented Silent Hill. It's true. I can't believe they made a demake of this map. And now they made Resident Evil. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> yeah, they announced it uh, yesterday, I think. Oh, yeah, they did. I can't believe Dead by Daylight invented everything. They invented horror. They invented Freddy and Jason. <laughs> Wait, no, not Jason. Everything but Jason. Mike Myers. Everything, in that guy. <laughs> yeah, like everything but Jason. Everything but Jason. That's the only thing they didn't invent. All right, this one's a pure random. Like I just, I just run through forward here, and with any luck, I don't get bit by anything, and nothing actually did bite me. I'm too far away from that. Oh, that's sad. Sad state of affairs. There we go. All right, we're gonna pick up a weapon here. This comes in handy. This is the only weapon we pick up in this run, actually. Uh, the shotgun. We don't pick up the rifle later in the run, mostly because of a thing that happens. We don't have a chance to get it, really. But the shotgun is actually the weapon with the highest damage potential in the game. A lot of people think it's the rifle because, you know, the rifle's the one you get later, but uh, the rifle is only better from longer distances. The shotgun, at point blank, has the most damage potential of any weapon in the game. But it's that point blank. That's the catch. Right, I need this ball. Thank you. Ball obtained. That ball is a surprising tool that will aid us later. Go up to the rooftop. All right, and Harry needs to investigate the drain in order to know that there's a key in there. So I try, I tried to do a stumble council into the the investigating, but I, I spaced it wrong. Fortunate. That's another area where you can save some time. We'll equip the shotgun now because this is the. Uh, this is the most convenient time to do that. I open a drainage valve, and as the water flows, I will stay hydrated myself. I almost choked on that, because that was a very overacted water drinking. <laughs> Excuse me. Wait, you just use like a glass of water to drink? Like, you don't use like a... Yeah? It's just a, uh. it's, just a, it's just a glass of water, dude. Oh. What else would it be? I'm it's confused. something like a like a water bottle sort of thing. Oh, I just 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 a glass. Oh. oh. Is, is that is this unusual? <laughs> I just I never see anyone actually use glasses whenever they like whenever they stream. Clearly I'm a fancy kind of guy. Right, we get the key. I'm getting the key. I have the key. We need two keys to advance to the next part of the game. Running straight forward here and to the left is also a surprisingly consistent enemy manipulation. Again, seems like the kind of thing that wouldn't work, but because you in you purposefully trip the enemy's aggro range, 
Uh, it sort of freezes them in place while they attempt to track you, and then you can just run past them on the wide bit of the hallway. Pick up those shotgun shells. We only pick up two boxes of ammo in the whole run because we kill like four things total in this entire speed run. To get the locker key, which is the key from a locker. Boo. Jump scare. Although I do love the fake out they do on the first one. Yeah, unfortunately, I skipped it. It's a cutscene. You're allowed to skip that one. You can't skip the close up of the thing that falls out of the locker. And it wouldn't be spooky. All right, now I have both keys, which is the main goal of the Nightmare School accomplished, and I've managed to do that without any any one of the childs biting my ankles, which is lovely. That's the main way you lose time in this segment of the game, is messing up one of the dodges and having one of those children bite your ankles for a bit, which uh, is no good. Each time it happens, you, it loses about three to four seconds, and also health. You don't have infinite health. You have plenty, like, especially on easy mode. You've got, like, enough that you sh on a a fairly decent run, you won't generally need to heal, but if you take too much damage, it can start to become a problem. Right, Valve Puzzle. This Valve Puzzle is the only version difference between the English and Japanese versions of the game in terms of a speedrun, because on the Japanese version, the text for the valves takes one frame more to draw in. One. I timed it myself. Huh. That's it. That's the only change. It's negligible if you do the hold skip button thing as well. Why don't some uh, Japanese versions of this game have like one of the late game skips patched out? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. I know that one in particular, only because I researched Silent Hill 1 a lot around huh. that time. Yeah, there's actually two versions of Silent Hill 1. This game received a patch. There is, there is a version 1 and a version 1.1. All American versions are version 1.0. America never got the patch. Some Japanese versions are 1.0 and 1.1. All European versions are 1.1, and 1.1 has uh, the major skip that we use in the run fixed. And also, like, there's a bug in 1.0 where a certain memo does not appear. It's supposed to trigger on a New Game Plus, like a story thing doesn't show up on American copies of the game. Huh. It's, just, it's just bugged. And uh, it was only fixed on later pressings of the Japanese version and all European versions. Otherwise, the differences between version 1.1 and 1.0 are fairly minimal. But still, this game does technically have a updated version. There is a patch for it. A hot fix, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Get me around. Get me around these trees. All right, so I picked up a bunch of keys. Now I have to navigate to a nearby church. Uh, this camera angle is not advantageous. Harry almost getting stuck on the garden furniture. Why is a speed on his shirt missing a texture? I wish I knew, man. You think I'm happy about this? I couldn't find the texture. Like, they don't pay me enough to be on this show. I can't afford a texture. I thought you had to install, like, Gary's mod for that. <laughs> now, that's what I'm doing wrong, is it? I wish someone told me that before I went live. Ridiculous. I gotta dodge this bird. Hold that. Oh, okay, the bird lost interest. Never mind. So, these, these birds, how persistent they feel like being in terms of, of chasing you is... Up in the air. Oh, two bird chase, huh? It's a, it's one of those two bird type situations. No, he lost interest. That is like, that's me. That's like my attention span. <laughs> Seems very intense for all of 20 seconds and then just gets bored and drifts off. Because they can't go past a certain point. They have like an activation range. And if you get past it, they, they just like, well, you know what? I'm off, pal. All right. Get to the church, get the drawbridge key. Will I get the chapel door without bouncing off it? Yes, excellent. I That requires a surprisingly specific spacing to work. You have to hit like a particular part of the door in order to open the church door correctly. If you, if you are trying to approach it head on, it probably won't work. It's funny like that. 
And coming up is the the drawbridge control tower, which I think is the hardest room in the game in terms of movement. This is this is the kind of stuff that like raises the heart rate when you're on good pace going in. Like I'm, I'm not even kidding. Because the reason for this is that the frame rate in the tower is like negative two. It's like it's so bad it reverses time. Yeah. No, gross. I got stuck on the weird corner. I'm stuck on the weird corner. That's why it's so hard. That's a critical. Mm. In serious attempts, that kind of mistake. Shameful type of gameplay, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 where it's at. That's that's why that room is deadly. It looks very I minor. I'm, make, the, uh... I'm, make, I'm making jokes out of that, because it's funny. Because it is funny how like how how much this run emphasizes the small details. But that room is actually very hard to do smoothly. Because it runs like so badly. You can't like make fine adjustments easily because it drops like every third input up there. It's it's so terrible. I love that room because of the uh if you look at the snowfall, you can literally like see like a PowerPoint presentation. It's like I in an emulator, I think it's like seven. I think it's seven FPS, it's single digit. <laughs> it drops like, so low I, in that room. I normally never mind, like, FPS, like, oh, 30, 60, like, I'm kind of uneducated on the whole thing. I know there is differences, I can kind of see them, but, like, I don't ever noticeably tell, but that's, like, one room where if I look at it, it's like, yeah, this is awful. This this game has a very inconsistent frame rate in general. Oh, yeah, one thing I'm doing in this run that I might not have pointed out is that every single time I do a quick turn, I'm actually holding down the walk button during the quick turn, because holding walk while quick turning increases the frame window for a valid quick turn. Trying to do it while like in the running state makes it so that the timing is remarkably tight. Whereas holding walk makes it more consistent. Like here, I'm holding also, down um, walk while I do that, which is triangle in my case. We talked about uh, a wee bit of it in the beginning of the run, but w what exactly are you doing to make this run good plus instead of just regular good or regular plus? Right. That's what I'm picking up right now. Good plus requires two ending criteria to be met. The plus part comes from using a certain item on a certain boss, although we're going to do it in a weird and glitchy way that benefits the speed. And the good part comes from accomplishing a certain side quest at the middle portion of the game, where you need, you need to open a motorbike. Uh, the, the sort of the rationale for Harry doing that is a bit preposterous, but it, it's one of those things that really only makes sense on a New Game Plus type of playthrough. But uh, if you ignore both those things, you do, you're doing any percent, which gives you the bad ending, but this is, you know, we're going for the best ending. The one where all the nice things happen. So we'll be taking the time to accomplish those side quests. Also, for the theme of the show, we're finally in the hospital. Oh yeah, we're in the hospital now. This is... <laughs> it took us 20 minutes. Most of the run takes place in a hospital of some description. But weren't we just in like a school for like 10 minutes? Yeah, but like, you know, most of nowhere is mostly hospital as well. Yeah. Right, so... You accomplished the theme. In the hospital, I need to pick up this blood pack. And also, I, the goal of the hospital overarching is to pick up four colored plates. I already acquired the blue one, it's just kind of laying out in the open. This yellow one is also just laying out in the open. Now we're going to ride the elevator down to the first floor. I got a white turn there, that's kind of annoying. But yeah, fun movement thing about this game. When you load in a room and you hold like up left or up right to input like a turn, there's a semi-random chance you'll get Harry will just turn really wide when you do it. And uh, that can be very disadvantageous depending on the room. It's one of those small things. This game actually has like rakes of random elements to it from like just things like inputs. Sometimes the game just does not do inputs the same way twice. And that was that was a nice tight turn. That was the good luck. That input can be processed wrong. All I'm doing there is holding up left and sometimes it comes out different. I'm gonna use the blood pack in this room. You only need to take one step forward in this room for it to trigger. You, you need to take a step forward, but you don't need to take like a whole step. It can be a mid-step. Distracts these tentacles and lets us get the green plate. And now I have all the plates. I can solve a puzzle over yonder. Puzzle in question is that I honestly forget why this solution is the solution that it... There's like a poem. It's always a poem with Silent Hill games. 
There's a poem. It correlates to colors and positions and blah, blah, blah. Put the plates in. Open the door. All right, now I gotta do nurse push. This is a critical trick. Well, I got my shotgun equipped. I gotta push this nurse out of the way. I got stuff to do. There you go, I got through. Smashing. That's actually remarkably hard to do. It depends on the nurse's initial position, which is slightly random, whether or not the nurse feels like being pushed all over the place. And it also depends on, you know, like your timing and your spacing between the shots, etc, etc. There's like, there's a lot of minor things that go into that, but I got through it, so it's okay. That nurse, that nurse challenged that movement, and that was a little bit scary because she can totally body block you really hard coming off that. And then it's tragic, because nurse stabs do a lot of damage, don't you know? And getting stabbed by anyone does a lot of damage, but they in particular do a lot of damage. The green ones do more damage than the blue ones. Really? The random salad. Yeah, they really, it's true. The, 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 the male doctors especially do the most damage. It's like triple. I can't imagine that's something most people even think that the damage values would vary, but they do. This cutscene runs at 60 FPS for some reason. Hope you enjoyed that brief burst of a frame rate because it is now gone. We are back to your regularly scheduled 15. We're now in the hospital basement. Find the room where a lesser is being cared for. I haven't really addressed the plot of this game much because honestly, it's Silent Hill 1. Either either you know. You like the detail like this is a speedrun. Like if you want to know the plot, you look it up on a wiki. You don't ask me. Less as a psychic child being taken care of at a hospital because a boiler blew up in her house. Very bad. That's the second box of shotgun ammo we're picking up. And that's the last one we're getting. So we have a total of... How many shots is it? 30. 30 across the whole run. Six in the shotgun to start with, and the two boxes are 12 each. Hey, no dot block. Sweet. That doctor can spawn on the corner, which is extremely inconvenient if he does. Was I dreaming? Up the key. Alright, now I have the antique shop key, and we are going to run all the way over to the other side of town and perform the most inconsistent trick in the video game. Hooray. Because uh, we have, like, proper skips in this one. Like glitches and stuff, it's crazy. So this is the reason why I said earlier we don't pick up the rifle. This is the reason. The rifle is inside of the next boss fight. We're not going to fight the next boss. We're not even going to see them. We're going nowhere near that place. I have no plans on that. Okay, we're out of the hospital, although we will be going back there. Sort of in some form. Eventually all the places start blending together, quite literally. Yeah, the trick is extremely inconsistent and kind of not really up to me because it depends on the enemy AI to do things conveniently, which, yeah. Can only do so much. Can only do so much. So the, punchy, this, how long... Uh, uh, so how long have you been running this game? Too long. That's a I good answer. I think it's like seven years or something. <laughs> Too long, dude. Right, so this trick is the romper out of bounds. The basic short explanation is that I want to get knocked down by this romper enemy as I walk back into the loading screen. And that will displace Harry's height, so he's not going to bite on that one. Try again. This is why it's highly, uh, highly inconsistent, because the enemy AI has to behave in the correct way, and it's not. It isn't biting. Give me a... No, it's still... No, no, still not playing. But he's not even, like, trying... This is the reason this is so inconsistent, because the enemy AI is, like, not even trying to participate, really. He knows it's a hot fix run. Nope, still not trying. This has nothing to do with me. The, the enemy AI just sometimes doesn't 
play the game. No, it's still not trying. This can take anywhere from 1 to 20 tries, so like, that should work. There we go. If you hear that crunching noise as you go through, you've got it to work properly, and boom, you go straight through the door. Because it has offset your position in a strange way that causes Harry to go through walls. And so now I'm walking in the air, literally. And that is why I do not get the rifle and I don't fight the caterpillar boss because I'm nowhere near it. I'm I'm void walking to the other end of town. That actually still saved time. I'm gonna land on this roof. Harry can do that because he has shins made of iron. We'll go down these stairs and we've teleported to the bottom of them for some reason. I don't know why that happens. I never looked into that. And now we're on the other side of town. I skipped a boss fight entirely. That saves about a minute and a half, assuming you get it first try, which I did not. <laughs> because the enemy AI did not play ball the first six times. Salah Hill 1 speedrunning. Dot PNG. Uh, in highly optimized runs, as you can imagine, that trick is frustrating. But it's a cool trick. I like it. Yeah. Resetting over it kind of sucks, but it's nice and flashy. I think that got found like a few years ago too at this point, so... Yeah, it's a couple years old, I think, at this point. All right, so Float Stinger, now I actually have to fight this boss. This boss has an unusual property where you want to space your shots very far apart. Because the way it works is that while they're recoiling and just after being hit, they have sort of armor or something. I don't really know how to describe how this works. But if basically if you dump all your shots into them as fast as possible, it won't work. Whereas if you space them, like, boom. Wait a couple seconds, boom, wait a couple seconds. You'll deal the maximum damage every time, and that enables consistent kills. If you, if I just dumped all my ammo into the, the that boss as quickly as possible, it would not have worked. I would have ran out of ammo, and then I would be dead. But with proper spacing, you can get a nice kill in a, in a low ammo count. That was actually really good. I took minimal damage, too. That's the main point of contention when it comes to your health bar in this run, managing that, because uh, Float Stinger can do that, like, butt swing attack. That does a surprisingly large amount of damage. If you cop, like, two or three of those, it can put you in, in questionable standing for the rest of the run. Uh, I didn't get hit by any of them, so my health is tight. I am in no real danger of botting out for the rest of the run. Sweet. Good fortune. I got hit by his acid attack, but that doesn't do anywhere near as much damage, so I don't really care. Getting hit is also not really a problem time-wise. You, you need to space your shots anyway, so like the recovery animation of being hit isn't really that harmful. In fact, a viable strategy is just to pick a corner and stand in it, and just let him hit you. As long as you don't get hit too much by anything else, then you will deal the right spacing damage to Float Stinger, and you'll survive the run. Right, so the sewers, where these enemies are, is completely random, and there's nothing... Well, that's... That's fun spacing. How many sewer dodges can he get? <sighs> Surprised I got that one. That was close. Where those enemies spawn, what direction they're turning, how aggressively they try and pursue Harry is... random. But you may not... You, you may be noticing a running theme with how I describe this game's run by this point. Whether or not you get blocked, whether or not you can proceed smoothly, it's all random. You can react to it. I got a lot better at reacting to the different scenarios as time went on, so my consistency rate with this section got pretty okay. But sometimes you do just you do just get dealt total garbage that you can't do anything with, and that is that is no one's fault. It just happens. That's just Silent Hill one. Sometimes your pattern sucks. Like that. No, actually, that's fine. I can... Yeah, see, that. Like that's like a react... I found the spacing. If I was a bit slower, I wouldn't have made that. I can scoot around this guy. If you recognize the scenario, you can make it work. Three out of four ain't bad. There's worse luck you can get. Four how out of four. The, uh, oh. uh, how hard did the mantises hit? Not very, surprisingly. Oh. You can take quite a few hits from them. It doesn't usually amount to anything super meaningful. They hit a little bit harder than, like, the kids in the school grabbing you, but they definitely do not hit anywhere near as hard as, like, 
float stinger. But they're very, very unlikely to be the thing that kills you. There's also cockroaches hiding about the floor. If you're wondering why I'm turning my light on and off, it's because enemies in this game do react to the flashlight. Different types of enemies react in different ways. So having your flashlight on or off at some points is critical to manipulating the enemy AI. Ooh, that's me bouncing off the door. Didn't manage to get the, the run stop cancel. I can get it here. Ah! Yes. That's the one you need. Oh no, spookies. And I run away. <laughs> Goodbye. So far, so good with the sewers. I turn my flashlight off here because I don't want to attract the attention of the cockroach enemies. And when the flashlight is off, the game is very, very dark. So you may, you may uh, rightfully wonder, how do you see what you're doing when uh, everything's dark? I don't. I memorized everything. I just know where I'm going. <laughs> I can't see anything, pal. Do not adjust your set. It really is that dark. All right, now we're in the resort area of the game, and this is where we can accomplish that little side quest to get the good ending. So we could just move straight on to our next objective here, but we take a little detour into a bar where a man named... Kaufman is being attacked. We met Kaufman earlier in the hospital. I'm going to do this funky strafe over to his wallet and steal his key because he dropped it. The key is mine now. Right, so we steal that guy's key. Harry thinks this is a good idea for reasons known only to Mason. The mind of a Mason operates in ways that ordinary people simply can't comprehend. So wait, wait, wait. Was Kaufman going to come back for his wallet or did he just like lose his wallet? He lost it. And we're not going to return it to him, though. That guy sucks. I suppose that's fair. Just, it's my key now. There's a there's usually an intermediary step to this side quest, but it's not actually required to register the side quest as being complete. So we're just going to hit up the motel, enter the access code, which is 0886. And now it's time for some very circuitous adventure game solving puzzle. There's a magnet. We need that magnet for the classic adventure game puzzle of get a thing out of a hole. Lucasart stuff. Bumped off the hotel room door. Bother. Push the shelf. Maybe there's a hole in the ground. You use that magnet. Harry extracts a motorcycle key. What? I wonder why he put his key there. He's trying to conceal it. Oh. It's hidden. And then we're going to enter this part of the motel, we find a motorcycle. Shocking. So we use the motorcycle key and that reveals a vial of some strange red liquid. The same kind of red liquid that we put in a bottle earlier in the hospital. That is, unbeknownst to Harry at this point in the game, and probably unbeknownst to the player, a bottle of Agleopahotis, which is a name I haven't pronounced correctly. It's a, it's a substance that kind of, like, exercises gods and demons from the physical body. Like, the, the sort of the metaphysics of this don't actually make any sense, but whatever. It's like a... It's a powerful substance in the sort of the spiritual metaphysics of the Silent Hill universe. So because we found that bottle in Kaufman's motorcycle, where it was being concealed mysteriously, Kaufman bursts in and is like, quit fiddling with my stuff! And he, like, takes the bottle off us and he runs away. That's it. That, that, that's all you need to accomplish the good ending, because now Kaufman has the bottle in his possession because he took it off you. We also have a bottle of the, the Agleopahotis ourself, and that is crucial to getting the plus component of the good plus ending. These are the things that really only become obvious. Like, there's, there's notes in the back end of the game that talk about sort of the demonic exorcism properties of the Agleopahotis. But uh, at this point in the game, Harry hasn't read any of these, so he's just collecting weird red crap off the ground for no reason. As one does. It seems like a normal thing to do. It's, it's one of those things that's like really designed for a New Game Plus playthrough, but we, you, know, you, can, you can just do it. 
Oh, Harry, get through. Oh, Harry, no, get on the boat. Harry, get on. <laughs> Thank you. That was a nightmare. Right, so now this is the lighthouse run. The lighthouse run sucks because you pretty much have to do it blind because there's rompers in the area and they're very aggressive the instant they like know your location and as soon as you turn your light on which i will do here briefly to sort of reorient myself they can like home in on you from miles away once you get down those stairs you're pretty safe but before that point hold on uh they become heat-seeking missiles if they so much as like with harry's bum hair even a little bit and it's no good at all. So, light stays off. Air streamers as well also react to the light being on, but they're a lot less quick to, like, completely zero in on Harry's location over it, so you can sort of flash it on and off briefly to reorient yourself without getting totally destroyed by enemies. All right, spiral staircase with tank controls. Great idea. Thank you, Konami. I'm using the walk key intermittently here to reorient myself. Like, there's no way to walk diagonally with these controls. They don't work like that. And if you keep Harry walking straight in for too long, he'll bounce off the railing. Spiral staircase in a tank. It's The camera angle is very nice. Very effective use of negative space. You know, like, you know, haha, I know film theory, but like, like... <laughs> Spiral staircase, tank controls. Yeah. All right, now we're on the way out. Don't block me at the top of the staircase. Thank you. That dog can sometimes get in the top of the staircase and wedge you in there, and that sucks and is really hard to deal with. Also, I just remembered a question that we have, uh, haven't really talked about. Uh, is there a preferred version to play this game on? Uh... Unpatched Japanese or American will do. I mean, more on the uh, console differences, like oh, PS1, console differences. PS2. Right now we're on PS TV. Yes. Uh, I know that question comes up a lot, so figured. I'm playing on PS TV because real time it runs the game about five minutes faster than any other version for some reason. Like the actual game speed is just slightly higher. But uh, we use in game time to time Silent Hill 1 speed runs which takes care of loading times and that game speed difference. So any version of the game that you have that is capable of performing all the glitches is competitively viable, like PlayStation 1. I think the top runs are generally done on PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. PS3 was a thing that the top runners, i.e. me and Aaron, ran on for years because that was just the cheapest version available. It was like $10 on PSN. Uh, you can even run it on PSP if you like not having enough shoulder buttons. Right, so we're going to do uh, the red liquid glitch here. So normally we'd use this on the boss of the area to purge the demon on them, because that's what we do. But if we use the red liquid on an enemy instead, this happens. Got it replaced the Sybil's model with the ghost child. We we used the red liquid Sybil. on a ghost child instead of the boss. Wake up. Snap out of it. And the game yeah. considers that good. Sybil. That's good enough. Harry. <laughs> Not so, only is it good, it's good plus. <laughs> Shh, don't that this is I'll the plus care. component of the ending. This is this is both faster because it skips the entire amusement part segment, and it it gets you a better ending. Well, that looked pretty normal to me. I didn't see anything wrong with that. You know what's fun about that is that that sequence behaves differently depending on console. Since we're on that topic, you get different like ragdolling out of Harry depending <laughs> on the system you're running the game on. That's that's the PS TV variant you witnessed, but try it for yourself on PS3 and PS1 and you'll see different results. I didn't know it was different per console. It's, it's different per console. Also, we're back in the hospital kind of it's like the only thing in the game that does differ depending on console. Huh. Like, in terms of mechanical behavior, it's like the only thing that visibly behaves differently. 
The only other thing is like the out of bounds. If you're playing on PS2, you can walk straight through the door instead of having to turn slightly when you get to it. I don't know why, but that's true. It's very, there's really minor version differences, but nothing that amounts to anything significant. But as far as like preferred version goes, it's honestly up in the air. If you have a copy of this game and it can do the required glitches, you can compete. You can get world record. I think so anyway. All right, we've got to do the Stone of Time puzzle. This puzzle's a complete red herring because you think it's astrological science, but it's actually just number of limbs. The bull has four legs. The two people have eight arms and legs. Is it a different emulation? It differs depending on the emulator, yes. It's great. In this puzzle, you type in alert. I cannot explain to you guys the number of times I have killed runs to that by typing my own name in instead of alert. It is, it is a very bizarre specific mental block that I have done multiple times. It looks straight to the door. Well done, well done. Use that stone of time on a clock. The clock will give us an opinion about this run's pace. Rude. <sighs> Didn't want your opinion anyway. Open the haggith door. We ascend to floor three. And I, I, I don't know the solution to this puzzle, but my hands do, so I'll just let them take care of it. My hands know what they're doing. Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah, looks like it. If if you ask me to like explain that puzzle to you, I won't be able to give you an answer. But my hands know how to do it, so I just sort of let them do it. Like if you ask me to write it from memory, I think I would fail. This is the only other normal enemy in the room we kill, because they're in the way. Sorry about that. Also, really quick, I saw a question in chat. Uh, yeah, this game uses in-game time, and it's incredibly accurate, actually. Um, so it doesn't matter what version you play on. You'll always be on equal footing. Yeah, it takes out load times, cutscene time. Even the time it takes to load in a text box is accounted for. It's, a, it's actually a remarkably robust in-game timer. It is, it nulls pretty much all hardware differences. So any copy of this game you have is competitively viable. PS3 loads abysmally slowly, but was what most of the record runs were done on for a very long time, because that's just what we had. Whereas now I play on PS TV, which is like a mini console. It's kind of an obscure mini console actually, but it's not fundamentally that different from running it on a PSP. Think of it like a PSP, okay? That's the most like succinct way to explain how that works. Jelly beans. Cool to have. Also, the weird part about the PS TV is that if you're like, I think if you're either in Japan or if you're British, it's easy to get. Yeah, it's cheaper in those two regions. It's really expensive in America. Yep. Not that many of them anymore. The Silent Hill games in general actually have remarkably robust in-game timers when it comes to, like, nullifying hardware differences. Alright, hang on. This is a timing thing. Don, Don, go. I don't know why that works. For some reason, if I say that out loud, I hit it every time. If I don't, I, I whiff. Huh. I'm aware that looked really silly, but if I don't do that, I miss it. And with that, we are approaching near the end of the game, and I didn't get grabbed by a single child the whole run. Hey, good stuff. That is actually remarkably good. This has gone pretty well, I think, aside from sixth try to bounce. Shame. Now I just need to put all of the items into the door. So would you say this run is, uh... Would you say it's been going good? Going good plus? I like that joke, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs>
We're the, no, Harry, you're caught on... I warned you about the stairs, Harry. <sighs> All right, final boss. So the final boss of this run requires a timing to kill it, which is that due to a strategy that I unearthed by translating a strategy guide from like 20 years ago, if you wait for this boss to start charging its lightning... Time is coming up, by the way. Shooting while it's charging lightning deals five times damage. So with a full shotgun round, dead. Time. That's, that's time. You, you time thing. Yeah. Sweet. That's underestimate, baby. And that is good plus. That's good plus ending. That's the true final boss of the game. We killed him in six solid shotgun shells because of bonus damage with timing. All right. And while we're watching this ending here, uh, if people want to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? You can find else. me at twitch.tv slash punchy. It's a simple URL. It's very convenient. Listen, I, uh, if you enjoyed this run, please do follow me on Twitch because I do like telling people the nitty-gritty about doors and frames and stupid stuff in games like this. It's very entertaining for me. My Twitter is also at succinct underscore punchy if you want to find me there. I tweet stupid things, mostly rhythm game stuff lately. I've been playing too much Archaea. It's like all I've done for the last three uh... days. Any shout-outs or anything like that? Oh, there's a lot of shout-outs for this game, actually. Like, this, the community of this game has been a very active one. I, like I said, I've ran this game for, like, seven years, so, like, shout-outs to Aaron, who is the current world record holder of the category and, like, I think every category in Silent Hill 1, pretty much. He's He grinded this game out for months and months on end over the course of, like, a whole year, a couple years back. He got crazy good at it. I think he's the only person with a sub-30 and any percent. He developed a lot of the more optimal strats. Uh, super good runner. Super good runner of this game. Full respect. And there's also uh, Ekudet, the original runner of this game. He ran this game on SDA back in like... <laughs> 2000. <laughs> the early 2000s or something. It was, oh my a goodness. Straight up 2000. Like, not like even the like year, 2000. The year 2000. Yeah, 2000. Yes. He, he uh, laid also, the actually, blueprints for this run. If you don't mind me giving one, there's another guy uh, who competed with Ekudet named Tyranex. Oh yeah. Some oh, Australian yeah. guy. I actually know Man. all the world records in this game. I've been meaning to do something. I just keep forgetting it. This game has a long and storied history of uh, of competitors and talented runners gradually pushing that little bit more and more. Uh, also, Orofin, that uh, the out of bounds trick that I did in the run that was discovered by Orofin and later refined by I think it was also Aaron. I think those two worked in tandem. But definitely shout outs to Orofin as well. He discovered the out of bounds and made my life significantly more difficult. But it's a cool trick, so you know what? It works out. And there's there's so many more people, honestly, that I'm like forgetting. This 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 game's community's been it's been it's been fun to hang around for seven years. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this still if it wasn't still kind of entertaining. 1999 Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo. Harry takes his child and escapes Silent Hill. I haven't got time to watch the full length of V, sorry. 32.30. Oh, Mid-32 is a pretty all right time for a marathon run. My PB is like high 31-ish or something like that. All that's, right. a good that's a good show. That's a good I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Good run. Thank you again, Punchy. Uh, before, we head on, uh, before we head to the next one, you have anything you would like to say? I think I got it all out during the ending, honestly. Just thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider dropping me a follow. It's been it's been great being here. This game's great. I like running this game. It's very entertaining. All right. Well, with that being said, and with the first game all nice and done, we're going to be uh, getting set up for our next game. So we're going to take a quick wellness break. I recommend you stand up, stretch your legs, do what you need. We're going to be right back very quick. But before we go, I just want to give a quick reminder that SGDQ 2021 online prize submissions are now open. So if you'd like to uh, help contribute to that or submit a prize, you can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out more information about this. All right, we're going to be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. So Silent Hill 1 was a lot of fun to go through. Uh, we had uh, little little bits and pieces of hospital in there. We had the ending, we had the middle. Uh, it did take us 20 minutes to get to the hospital, though. But our next game uh, will definitely be a lot more hospital-oriented. And honestly, I like this game. I feel like this game is always kind of divisive, uh, depending on how you feel about it. 
by uh, kind of going more into the reaches of the modern horror gaming, or I guess like, not, not so modern anymore, but kind of one of the starts of that trend. One might say that this game uh, outlasted a lot of the competition around that time. Anyway, if that wasn't obvious enough, our next game is going to be Outlast, but we're going to be looking through it more glitchless, and to help us run through that, we're going to be having Outlast with The Darkened Rose. Take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, hello, my name is The Darkened Rose. Uh, I run this game, uh, glitchless and no save and quit, uh, which it's literally just play through the entire game, uh, no glitches or anything like that, and no save and quit strats, which I will explain as we get further into the run. But first things first, I gotta do the uh, honorary uh, save deleting, <laughs> in which we're literally just gonna delete our whole list of saves that we get out of this run. That's a lot of so, saves. Yeah, this game, whenever you start a new game, it tends to save a lot. And uh, as you can see, it's a lot. <laughs> All right, so, I'm going to try to give a bit of a background on this game. I know this game is already a few years old, so people should know the plot, but I'm going to try to lay it down at least the best I can. But uh, time is going to begin in three, two, one, go. So Outlast has you play as an independent journalist by the name of Miles Upshire. He's a bit of a witty guy, a bit sarcastic, a little cynical, and uh, he got a tip-off from an anonymous source, which, if you play the Whistleblower DLC, you'll know who it is. Uh, he gives a tip-off that this company called Murkoff Corporation was doing some weird, heinous stuff in this insane asylum, and uh, someone's got to go and cover it all. So, Miles gets here. It's a little quiet. Just a little quiet. And there's no one around. I wonder what's going on here already. So, this run is pretty straightforward. We're going to be running around pretty quickly uh, throughout everything. We're not going to be hiding like you would in normal gameplay, and we're going to just book it as much as we can. So, we're going to make sure that we don't die here. Um, we got a camera that has night vision, also jump scare. <laughs> oh, man. And by the way, we're not going to be able to pick up any batteries during this run. So we're going to have to make sure that we play safe with our batteries. So uh, really quick, just as a question. Uh, how, mm -hmm. since this is glitchless, I, I know a bit about the glitch route. Uh, how much like time is there a difference between like if you were to do it with glitches and glitchless? If you want me to give you uh, a really good answer to that, if anyone has seen the any percent <laughs> run to Outlast, you will see the immediate time difference. Yeah. It's literally a seven to eight minute run, if I remember correctly, compared to glitchless. Because there is a glitch at the very beginning of the game that literally takes you under the map and able to hit the trigger near the final level of the game. And it skips the entirety of the game. It just, it saves so much time. But uh, honestly, like, I found a lot, uh, I really enjoy the game a lot that I really wanted to do glitchless. This category has been around for a long time, so there's been a good deal of optimization done to it. And I remember this run going from like a 55 minute run all the way down to what is now a 50 minute and 30 second run. So it's pretty crazy stuff. Also, you're gonna see me hopping around uh, at times because with Miles, there is momentum to his jumps. Um, you wanna make sure that you're always at full running speed. I hear that uh, the game's pretty loud at times. Yeah, we're, Miles runs on momentum, and you want to always stay at full speed so that you can always get the furthest possible jump, which kind of gives you like a bit of a boost, but not too much. But there is something pretty useful that we'll use it for later. For now, we're gonna get into the security room, and uh, honestly, there's too much for us here to deal with, so we're gonna try to leave, you know, just hack it to the security, you know, security office and override the lockdown, because I don't want to be here anymore, dude. <laughs> I mean, it is a pretty scary and, uh, hospital. 
It is. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> Hi, Martin. Oh. All right. Wasn't going to be that easy. So we get to have our introduction to the first uh, big bad dude of this game, but uh, we're going to kind of cheese it a little bit. I did say no glitches, but the <laughs> still not a glitch. <laughs> so instead of hiding in the locker, you actually just hide beside <laughs> the door and you just wait for him to break through. So actually, that does raise to a good question that uh, adds up to a nice follow-up here. So I know for a lot of people who may be unfamiliar with Outlast, I know many glitches communities always define this differently. So what exactly will be allowed that might not be a glitch or might be kind of sketchy? Because I know different communities always have different rules. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're going to see for me during this run is that you're, gonna, you're already seeing it a little bit. Um, I'm actually doing some animation skips. Uh, I'm trying to tackle some of these jumps at an angle so that I get the fastest possible vault animation or the climb animation. And some of it's gonna look pretty... Oh, some of, some of it's gonna look pretty weird. Also, this game has a tendency to eat my inputs. Excuse me! Anyways, he won't be a problem anymore. So, because Father Martin ended up, uh, you know, just, you know, just unplugging the uh power supply i'm just gonna say that uh we had to go turn it back on and uh now we can head back and uh override the lockdown hopefully here's a little that's a, that's a little something for you there <laughs> you're gonna see some weird animation uh stuff while i'm doing this <laughs> anyways uh father martin has some better ideas right now and he's gonna well Come on, man. <laughs> oh, it's very fitting for the uh, hospitalist setting. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not much of a fan of needles, I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, they're terrifying. Never, never, never have been a fan of them. So, there's something more to this. There is a uh, entity called the Wall Rider in which you're seeing him in action right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I sometimes, I, I sometimes just like act out the scene with like voices and sound effects. So <laughs> I'm trying hard not to do that. But so you just see the wall writer. He's literally invisible to the naked eye, and he just destroyed those Murkoff dudes right there. We're gonna run into him later for sure. Got a good feeling. So somehow we ended up waking up in solitary confinement. Yeah, they just dragged us all the way over here. Don't know how, but it happened. And uh, they left us our camera. Thank God, we still need that. <laughs> so we're going to be waiting for a moment, but uh, uh, just to like finish off with some of the gameplay stuff. Yeah, like there's going to be some sections where we're going to be pretty much like almost having no battery for night vision. Uh, there's still, like, two moments where the run can die. Uh, there's one right now that, I'm, well, not well, very soon, that I'm actually pretty concerned for, because I was practicing it before getting on. And, uh, recently, it's been pretty inconsistent. Mm -hmm. On the upside, you have so, uh, uh, plenty of saves, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still going to do it just to, just to show oh, it definitely. off, because it's, it's a pretty good uh, way to, like, skip a few seconds, which... Technically, you're not te you're not skipping anything. You're just doing something very early, which you shouldn't be unless you want to die. But uh, it's a uh, it's something pretty good. It saves you like four seconds, I believe. Alrighty, so there are some good people in this place, and Father Martin's actually letting some of these insane patients uh, uh, go around and do some things for him so that he can lead Miles uh, towards where he needs to go to get the scoop. Anyways, we need to go get through here so that we can unlock this door. We're gonna jump past that... Okay, come on. We're gonna jump past that guy. Have him almost hit us. Squeeze through that guy! That got hit there, but that's alright. Sometimes it happens. And then we're gonna run back in here. Um... This run pretty much goes quick, so I'm gonna try my best to keep up with what's happening. And speaking of which, there is the introduction to the twins. Technically, in the main, in the regular 
in a regular playthrough of this game, you run into them earlier when you get out of that solitary confinement cell, but we actually vaulted over the railing and uh, we just, we didn't really want to see them then. So I just wanted to wait until now to show them. But the twins are a bit of a runt killer uh, very soon. And it's, it's a little worrisome because they, if they grab you at all, you're pretty much dead. They're, they're an instant kill. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my breath on this because this is gonna get a little intense for two seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. So that was the moment I was scared about. So they actually have a second window that you can jump out of if uh, if you really wanted to just, you know, be very close to them as they were walking towards you. Because the twins are in that hallway and uh, they're going to block your path. So you need to climb out the window. Now, if you jump through the first window that's open and quickly climb through the second window while they're walking by, that you can actually run past them and you'll just barely brush against them. Hmm. Oh man, I'm thankful that uh, that moment actually turned out well because I was scared it was going to die. It seemed pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty intense. And actually, um, I'm wondering, how much damage do the enemies deal? Are they all kind of like the same? Can any one hit kill you? Um, do you recover health? Uh, uh, you do recover health in this game. Um, I believe as you go up higher in difficulty, because there is an insane difficulty, which I believe there's no saves in that one. So if you die, you start at the very beginning. Jesus. Uh, it, uh, you have three hit, you have three hits before you die. Um, some enemies are insta-kill enemies, so if they grab you, you're pretty much dead. Um, that guy, Chris Walker over there, he's a little strange, because it really depends on where you're at. Sometimes you can get three. You can get hit three times. Sometimes you can only get hit two times. It really depends, like on what's happening and what difficulty you're playing on. Alrighty. So here's this spot. Also, I'm hoping that something happens here because there's a guy down there that kind of moonwalks around. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Why is he? he why does he do that? I, I, I don't even know. Uh, there's some weird things that have been happening with my game recently, but I feel like that is actually like sort of a thing that happens at times for some runners. That guy will just start like m being really weird with his movement. You'll just hear like constant like rapid movements from him as he's like going backwards, and it's just really silly when you see it. All right, so. We're gonna keep going through here and get through the get to the next section of the game, which is just down here. Oh man. So I'm gonna say that there are a lot of plot details that we're kind of missing out here as we're running through this because this game has you needing to be observant if you want to get a good idea of what the full story is. You're supposed to walk around with your camera and actually film certain events so that it updates your journal, uh, in which Miles will actually write his own words on what's going on, in which that's where I actually got the uh, cynical personality stuff from. He's, um, he's, he's kind of, uh, I don't know. He's not so much of a good guy, but he has really good intentions for being here. So, I mean, uh, or I, I guess. I mean, he, he wants to make sure that what happens here never happens again, so I, I gotta give him credit for that. Mm. Oh, we're gonna... <laughs> There's Chris Walker acting like a football player right there, just, hey, just waiting on me to get through his defense. Um, I'm gonna mention that Chris Walker has a little bit of a weird movement. Uh, not, oh, I was about to say movement set, but his movement is a little weird sometimes. Um, that character, he actually is an ex-military police, uh, man, and what happened was that he actually was employed to Murkoff, but, uh, a series of bizarre murders happened in which, uh, well, let's just say some of their, some of his co-workers, uh, got unlucky. Uh-huh. And, uh, 
he was put in a near death state uh, by some other people that were actually investigating what happened behind those murders. And he is the man that he is now. Um, a lot of the people that you see here have underwent this uh, project called the Wall Rider Project, in which we saw the Wall Rider earlier. And uh, they wanted to use insane patience to wield superpowers, or at least a super entity that can, you know, be undetected and just, you know, kill everything. And you could see how that turned out. Huh. So, right. um, you're saying he moves kind of weird? Yeah. Like, there's just moments where, like, you'll see him just, like, do that. Like, he'll literally just kind of stand in a bit of a defensive way and just kind of wait on you to get up to him. So, sometimes I have to, like, make him move around a little bit just so I can jump past him. Um, there is a moment later on that could get very hairy if, uh, I don't do that properly. Harry like bad or like Harry like Harry Mason from the last game? How about both? Well, one of those is good and the other one's uh, bad. Yeah. You make a good point there. So, so actually, as a general question, uh, what got you into running out last? Honestly, um, I, I mean, it's pretty much like, uh, I feel like it's the same story as uh, some other people have with games that they love. Like, they play it so much that they start, you know, challenging themselves to how fast they can beat it. Uh, I first played this game on the PS4 version, which the console version actually has a few more loading screens than the PC version. Um, so I got a PC back in 2013. Um, it wasn't that great of a PC, so I mainly still played on the PS4. And this game came out, and I just fell in love with it. Um, yeah, it's a pretty divisive game because of the gameplay mechanics. Like, there's some people that actually like to fight back. There's people that, you know, there's people that actually don't mind an approach as to running and hiding. I mean, I believe Shattered Memories came out uh, before this game. So it was starting to become a bit of a trend, and I was kind of all for it. And this game just ticked all the boxes for me. Like, I just loved it so much that I just kept playing it day in, day out. Uh, even when I went to my cousin's place, like, I just bring the PS4 and I just start playing it. <laughs> like, just because, like, I, I enjoyed it so much. And then eventually I got around to getting the PC version. And, uh, like, it just, it just became a whole different beast because now I'm on keyboard and mouse. And the movement just felt a heck of a lot more satisfying and gratifying whenever you master it. I gotta say, this run is definitely one of those easy-to-learn, hard-to-master games, because the mechanics that you have to deal with are, like, they're pretty simple, like, when you get down to it. But when you want to get that really good time, because this run is very optimal, like, it's just... It, uh... It becomes, like, one heck of a speed game. Well, I do want to... Like, uh... if you love... It, if you love movement games, you're gonna love this game. It's a fun one. And I definitely wanna say that your passion for this game definitely shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been with this game for a very long time and it's really affected my life in a lot of ways. So it's like, it's one of the reasons why I'm so happy to be running this right now. I'm trying so hard not to gush here about the game. Like, oh no, gush guys, away, uh, gush away. You're more than welcome to gush. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to ask. Uh, normally, whenever I'm running this game, I am just, I'm just fawning all over it. Like, I, uh, I'm, like, reciting certain parts, and we're going to get to one of my favorite parts of the game very soon, because the uh, character that's coming up that we're getting introduced to, I just, I don't know why, I just enjoy him so much. And I hope there's, I hope he says one certain dialogue uh, line, because it's my favorite line of all time in this game. It, it's just... It's just too good, and it's literally just a one-worded phrase. So, I'm gonna give a tiny bit of history right there. Also, a little bonus, because we're playing 60 FPS here. Glitchy text! <laughs> the text glitch is out there, because there's two people talking at the same time right there. So does that invalidate the category now? I'm just... But I feel like there might be people that argue. Right? 
But, uh, oh man, I, I wanted to talk about one part, but I think I'll talk about it a little later. Oh, good. That With that jump that we just passed. It's Traeger! Yay! I love this man! I'm sorry. Uh, finally, I get to have my moment to gush. <laughs> I just don't know why this man is amazing. <laughs> oh my god. I don't, I don't know why, just the delivery, like the performance of this character, it's just, it's just really good. Like it really makes this character like all the more better for me. Like despite this, like just, yeah, being like one of those games that people like think, you know, back and forth with, like, uh, all I can say is that one thing that will stay in my mind forever is that Traeger is amazing. Like, it, it's gonna stay that way. He's top 10, like, favorite characters. Just because, like, just... Th this whole scene is too good. <laughs> you know, I love the mountain air up here at night. You, you wanna head out? Take Go ahead, I'll wait here. Go on, run free! <laughs> I'm in no hurry. So, no? Alright. All right. No, is it a grindstone? Oh, I like that. Okay, okay the rice is way. <laughs> also, uh, we get we get a nice look at uh, you know, it's just why not? Just just a little whoop, just just right there. It's just, he's you know, it's just a amazing man. So, what's his uh, overall gimmick for the? Uh, I guess the new. I assuming like a new gameplay section. You went from one guy, now you get the next guy. So, going from Chris Walker to this guy, this guy, for those of you that are, uh, you know, Clock Tower fans, start making your connections here, <laughs> but uh, this man wields a pretty, pretty gnarly pair of scissors, and he's going to put that to use in a bit. Good choice. For those of you that are a bit squeamish, I'm just, just going to put the warning out there right now. Thank you for the warning. Yep. You have a few seconds left <laughs> to look away. So, yeah, he's just more agile. He's going to be, like, roaming around the hallways um, a little bit soon. And uh, he's a bit... He's a little scary the first time around when you play this game. Like, he's chasing after you. He's literally, like, saying things to you. Like, his, this is a guy that's actually able to talk to you, not Chris Walker, who's dead set on just trying to protect the, the whole asylum. But this guy, on the other hand... I mean, he's just spinning out words right here. Like, he's just spinning them out. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to assume, by the way, that for save and quit, normally you'd be able to save out of certain bike cutscenes and skip them entirely. Yeah. So that's uh, we actually passed one section with the valves right. in the sewer. Uh, that is actually a point where if you go to the second valve, it'll start saving, and you could just save and quit, and it will teleport you all the way back to the ladder, huh. so you don't have to run all the way back. I can see why that's not allowed. There's section. Yeah, yeah. For save and quit though, yeah, you could do that. We're not going to. Uh, all right. Look away, everyone. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm wondering. Hey, look, it's the scissors. Yeah, those are big scissors. <laughs> oh, I see the point now. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of another character that recently got a, a bit of a problem with his left hand and also his right hand, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, well, definitely, uh, we'll be looking more into that in due time. Don't you worry here. I don't, I don't want to say who, but if you know, you know. So he chopped off her fingers. All right, yep. Yep, come on. Yep, Miles is showing it all in its full glory. Like, we need to see this anymore, Miles. <laughs> um... Don't don't look back just yet. Actually, if you're auto, if you're uh, squeamish with audio, you might want to take off your headphones too. <laughs> let just let it out, Miles. Just let it out. Just let it out. It's okay. Wait, he just got his hands chopped right. off, or his fingers chopped off, I should say. All right, so we gotta we gotta walk up to this guy. This guy is uh, pretty messed up. Uh, they've been doing some pretty bad projects here. Experimenting on a whole bunch of insane patients, even their own employees, like I mentioned with Chris Walker. Traeger was also, like that guy just mentioned, he was an executive. 
Which kind of makes sense for why he's talking about selling things. All right. I'm going to listen for that dialogue line, because he says it right here. Come on. He only said it once when I practiced this entire, like, week's worth. Oh. Uh, he didn't see me. So, uh, what I just did right there is that you stand about 2.5 tiles away from the door, uh, and the door will just kind of go through you, and you could just run past Traeger. But there's some moments where he'll just actually, like, catch you, and he'll start chasing after you. And, oh, hold on. Speaking of which, hey, Traeger. <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to kind of mess around with him a little bit. Okay, I'll see you later. And, uh, well... Traeger's no longer a threat for the next few seconds. Oh. He just doesn't know what to do with the door, huh? <laughs> he's like any other guy at that point. He's got he's to bang on the door if he wants to get through. <laughs> so there's one line that he didn't get to say, and I'm so sad. But it's literally him, like, just exclaiming at, like, the most... Friendly, like, like you've never seen this guy in a long time way, where he's just like, buddy! Hold up there, buddy. <laughs> and it's perfect. It's, it I sounds like it. a fun time. Oh, there's also another one where he literally says, let me sell you for free! <laughs> you say some pretty funny stuff. All right, did a little bit of parkour just for you all right there. And uh, we just we just got out of here. I'm going to pull out the camera because uh, looks like I got something to record right now. With night vision on, by the way, just to uh, make sure you can't see what's going on. And uh, say goodbye to Trigger, everybody. He's dead. Oh. Oh, yeah, that, that and, would do uh, it. That would do it. Yep, yeah, that'd do it. Oh, dang it, I wanted to get those scissors. Add it to my scissor, scissor man collection. Oh, hey, at least it explains why we don't get the scissors for the rest of the game. Yeah, it just drops it. The cool thing uh, I'm going to mention uh, about Whistleblower, which is the DLC, um, I'm going to give a little bit of a background on that one now, since right now there's not really too much happening. Uh, we're just going to be doing more running and climbing for a sec. So um, you play as an actual employee of Murkoff, uh, he's one of the uh, programmers and maintainers of the Morphogenic Engine Project, which is the actual, like, beef of the project. Uh, and he actually blows the whistle on them. He uh, sends Miles the email that leads him here. And throughout the course of this game, just like how it is with Resident Evil 2 and 3, um, just to give a bit of an example, um, that guy is actually going through this game at the same time that Miles is here. Um, the beginning of Whistleblower starts before Miles gets here, and then the entire course of the game is during and after the events of this game. And, uh, it's a really good DLC. I highly recommend playing it. It adds a lot more context to certain things, like why things turned out the way they were, and just exactly how the project went wrong in the first place. Um, it's really cool stuff. Like, this game, in terms of lore, like, compared to Outlast 2, which... Honestly, for me, I actually wasn't really that fond of Outlast 2 compared to this one. Um, there's just so much to this game that I love. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Hold on just a second. Yeah, uh, weird movement right there, and uh, he might... Okay. All right, all right. Uh, he was actually supposed to run up a little further so I could jump past him, but he didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of lore to this game that that I'm just flying through right now that is actually, like, really well done um, compared to what I think about with Outlast 2. It's... I feel like Outlast 2 tried too hard with many aspects and, like, kind of went to, like, some cliche-esque sort of things. But that's just my opinion. Like, there mechanically, that game has a lot more to it than this one, but story-wise, I just have a soft spot for this one. Uh-oh. Hold on. All right, okay, we're good. We're good for right now. Um, that was the moment I was worrying about earlier with with Walker. Uh, there, If you're too slow right there, he will grab you and just throw you back, and you have to run around and waste a lot of time just trying to give the run around on him. 
All right, so that guy, he thought he was on fire, so that's why he reacted the way that he did. Poor fella. And uh, now we're gonna go look for the uh, the man that kept us in here in the first place, Father Martin. We're about to get a key piece of information about this whole thing, but uh, we still got a bit of ways to go to get there. So I guess just as a general question for anyone who wants to like learn this game or anything, um, do you ever get extra batteries or like, are some parts gonna be no, totally you do dark? You you uh you have to be conservative with your battery. Uh, you don't pick up any batteries at all during this run. If you're starting out, there are like some sections where literally it's just right there. So if you did need the extra battery, you could just grab it, and uh, just continue to learn like how to conserve your camera battery. Also, uh, gonna do a little bit of a jump here. Uh, okay, that's all right. Um, you can actually do a bit of a cheese jump right there and actually skip a tiny bit of that ledge climb. But yeah, you don't pick up any batteries at all. Uh, that just wastes time. And uh, if you run out of batteries during a run, you are out of batteries. I'm sorry to say. All right, so we're not exactly done with Chris Walker yet. Um, this is the one section which I have one last worry about him, but it's... Oh, no. I was going to try to do a uh, landing skip right there. You can skip the uh, landing animation sometimes if you, uh, hit, if you uh, do an input just at the right time. We'll get to see that later, unfortunately. But, yeah, Walker's around here. And uh, he's not happy with you. He really wants to get you. You're kind of on his turf right now. Outside. And uh, I'm, I'm noticing that my battery's about to run out, so I'm gonna have to kind of go in and out, just being in the dark and having night vision. So apologies to anyone that uh, can't see what's happening. But uh, we're gonna cheese him right here. Uh-oh, all right, it's all right. Hope he doesn't grab me. All right, we're good. <laughs> Ugh, all right, and we're fine. It's okay. Walker's not gonna hurt us anymore. That, uh, that part used to scare me. Uh, I did a run for this at a uh, marathon a few a few years back for uh, No Reset, and uh, I actually got grabbed by him in that section, and just like earlier, if he grabs you, you gotta give him the run around and lose a lot of time. So we try our best not to have that happen. All right, it looks like uh, I'm not doing a good job with my batteries, but um, I played this game like more than enough to get through parts of this like in the darkness completely. <laughs> so if we have to do that. We'll do that. I'm actually gonna. I will play it safe though right now and just do that. Yeah, we're gonna be doing this for a second. I'm trying to really like get the just squeeze as much as I can out of this battery. All right. So right now we're. Uh, we're trying to get into a, um, we're trying to get to a door. Uh-oh. I'm going to just uh, fix that real quick. Just a second, everybody. Got to change my batteries. Oh, and uh, we're not alone here. Unfortunately, there's a guy with a pipe running around. Did he, like, vault that little cabinet when he was picking up the key? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we gotta grab one more fuse. You're just you're you're constantly running and just like you're just hope you're just like learning to just get over like these guys just chasing after you. I remember the first few times I played this, I was like a little tense, like oh well, no, not tense. I was always tense every time in these sections, but now I kind of just I kind of know what's up, and I'm just like, well, there you go, get hit by the pipe. So I've seen a few of these right, uh, questions in chat. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, it's just, he's gone now. <laughs> so I'm seeing a few of these questions in chat. Are, have, has anyone uh -huh. ever ran the game with only, with, without using the camera, so like darkness entirely? There is, uh, there is a uh, miscellaneous, uh, <laughs> there's a category extension on Spearin.com, and there is a no camera percent on there. Uh, so there, there is, you, you can run this with no camera, but... It is a little rough. I can <laughs> in imagine. Some sections. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna think about it, there is a section coming up where we will lose our camera. Spoiler alert! Sorry, guys. 
Uh, oh, 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 don't want to screw this jump up. There you go. There's some batteries right there. Free batteries. We're not grabbing them, though. Uh, there is a section where you lose your camera and you have to go through some portions in the dark to uh, try and find it. So you could just take that part and just apply it to the entire game if you want to go with that mentality. And then just learn how to get through these sections, like just memorizing where everything is. I haven't done one yet, but... Uh, oh man, that, that would be an interesting run if I ever did give it a shot. All right. Hey, look, there's Wall Rider again. Alrighty, and uh, I feel like we've been missing out on someone. Oh, hey, look, it's the twins. <laughs> and uh, well, we'll see you later. The uh, the most hilarious thing about that part is that that whole that a whole section relies on you getting terrified of seeing the twins as you walk through the door. So you have to run back and start hiding. But if you're doing this in a speed run, just run to the right and run past them. And it literally just, you literally just, you're done with them. Like for a minute. Oh, there's the camera. There goes the camera. Now, we can't exactly get through the game without the camera. And even if we did try to proceed without the camera, the game's telling us to get the camera. So we have no choice but to get the camera. So we're gonna have to take a bit of a detour and run all the way downstairs to grab this thing. Man, Miles, you had that, you had the camera strap on, man. Like, did you not tighten it or anything before you came in here? It's like amateur hour here. And these hands got tired. Yeah. The, I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's like a lot of strawberry jam on his hands right now. So, I mean, it, Probably might have just, you know, just... He might have just wanted it off, and uh, it just slipped off somehow. Oh, hey there! <laughs> so you get the camera back. This guy's chasing you, but... There's nothing special about this segment. You're literally just running back through it in the dark. You can go through it with night vision if you like, but... You literally just ran through this part in the dark. Why are you gonna waste your batteries? <laughs> Plus, if I remember correctly, there actually is not many interesting things in that area. So it's literally just run out of there. There's really no reason for you to be around there. All right. So now that that's over, we can finally proceed to where we gotta go. And uh, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a jump here that uh, I haven't. Oh. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay, I forgot about that jump. <laughs> There's a little pitfall right there that could have killed me. <laughs> oh god, okay. I just barely made that jump. I almost jumped a bit too early there. That could have killed me. <laughs> that would have been really bad. It seems like this part has a lot of tough jumps right now. Yeah, there's some platforming to this game. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to say that the movement in this, along with, you know, platforming, is pretty solid all right so chris walker's back again we're just gonna go through the vent and just ignore him now i'm gonna give a little bit of a funny story here because um before i got tech savvy with pcs and got a good idea uh of how to actually speed on the game i actually speed on this game on on a hard drive before putting it on an ssd um there was an instance where this guy right here that I just pushed off was actually in a T-pose, and I had it streamed and everything, but for some reason I didn't have a highlight. So, uh, you know, Source, trust me on it. I, it totally happened. We did a little bit of a nice little parkour jump right there. We were supposed to jump on the box and uh, jump to the ladder, skip a little bit of those ladder steps. Yeah, all right. So right now we can't exactly get up to where Father Martin is, which is the church. This place has a church, by the way, uh, in case you're wondering. Big hospital. And yeah, it's a big hospital. Um, and the problem is, is that the key to, oh, as one of the uh, variants, which is the name of the insane patients in this game, um, or the enemy type, I can say, is... Uh, 
he said the key to the house of God is in the theater. So we had to come to the theater to find the key. And uh, should be su 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 smooth sailing. Except that guy doesn't want us to go in there. So we're going to have to take the detour and climb around. Now, there is really important plot information here that I'm literally just going to gloss over. But this is literally talking about an experiment from the 40s during the course of World War II in which they were testing out some things that were going to lead up to the Wall Rider project in many years from then. And, um, yeah, there's some, there's some screwed up stuff um, to the lore. Um, I would love to stick around and uh, let the film roll, but uh, that's going to take a minute or two, so uh, I can't do that. All right, so we have to wait right now because I can't exactly open the door, as you can see. And, uh... All right, we're done with the twins right there. Pretty much the game is safe from here. Like, there's no instant deaths to deal with um, unless I'm actively trying to get insta-killed uh, or anything that could remotely kill you. So this is a, a portion of the game where it's pretty much smooth sailing. Um, it's a lot of movement and then later on some pretty neat platforming, which is going to be in the lab section of the game. All right. So, also, if you notice right now, uh, below, you probably just noticed that the, uh, dialogue was still going, like, the subtitles. I don't exactly know why that happens, but this is the only time in the game where, from the theater, from, from the theater on to this point, when I got into that room, the subtitles still keep going. So you get to have just a little bit of an extension to see what lore is there. All right, I'm gonna do a little jump so that we can get a few steps in because this game's gonna make us slow down. And uh, Father Martin's gonna, well, he's he's doing some stuff. Uh, he's just gonna explain some things regarding the Wall Rider from his perspective. Um, man's a bit of, it's a bit of, he's a bit of a religious man. And uh, what his actual goal is in terms of the Wall Rider is to actually let him loose. Uh, just because, like, it's... It, Fall Rider, it set us free and whatnot. Uh, the twins right now are blocking the door so we can't even leave. They literally just tell you, Hey, dude, uh, get your video camera, man. Uh, what are you doing? You gotta, you gotta look over there. But uh, I'm really liking these candles that are kind of just floating around. <laughs> it's pretty neat. <laughs> I'm gonna apologize in advance to anyone that actually likes the lore of this game. Like, I'm... Like, they have, I do this a lot in the run, so... But there's nothing different what I'm doing <laughs> towards what, what I normally do in these runs. I want to stay by the door, because they're going to open the door just about now. Uh, he's like, ah, why aren't you watching? Hmm. But they let you go anyways. They don't care. And uh, we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Walker for at least a few more times. So... We're gonna play a game of chicken against him. And uh, just like all the other times, we're gonna see if we can jump around him. Oh, 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 okay. Thanks for letting me by. I appreciate that. I didn't get the uh, the jump, but it's all right. There's a little bit of a magnet grab. Mer uh, uh, Miles is a uh, part Magneto, in, in case anyone's wondering. You, there are some funny like climbing animations you could do with him in which he'll literally just climb on but it's literally just magnet grabbing so it's levitating him towards the ledge and it's hilarious to watch all right so you may have just noticed that we just went down the elevator towards freedom but it's not exactly freedom because for some reason we're being taken all the way down to the depths of what is supposed to be in a scene asylum. Unfortunately, there's more to it than that. It's pretty chilly down here. So we're getting to the real bread and butter of this game, um, in which a lot of the stuff really starts to come out. By the way, familiar location. Um, you get to see the aftermath of what happened to those Murkoff guys that we saw in the recording very early on in the run. And uh, we're literally... We we're literally inside, like, the Murkoff Corporation, uh, like, facilities where they were having the Wall Rider project. 
And very soon we're actually going to see the thing that really made that really made the project, which is known as the Morphogenic Engine. And one particular guy that is actually the reason why everything has fallen apart. He was a success, quote in quotations, but it wasn't what they were expecting. Now, I didn't show it, but there is a window you run past here in which it's pointing you towards, hey, look, there's the way out. Uh, just go around and there's the door, but we're under lockdown. We can't leave because the wall rider, he's, oh, actually, hold on. Speaking of the wall rider, you haven't seen him for a good second. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? Anyone a fan of uh, Tekken and Street Fighter combo videos? Uh... There you go. Off the Look grounds, at this man. Off the He's walls. fucking. He... Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hey, you're all good. <laughs> He's uh. <laughs> He's uh, he's really going in. The pus hustle. And he just uh, makes him into like I, a smoothie. I, yeah. So Chris Walker's done. He's gone. There's no coming back from that. And uh, just after all of that, we now get to the man behind the entire project. We what we missed out in the theater is actually a man that was being interviewed. In which he is known as Dr. Wernicke. Um, you get to you hear him by mention from the insane patients around, uh, like throughout the course of the game. Like sometimes they'll even say like "Hello, doctor" and stuff because they they've literally lost like cognitive ability to like understand like what's in front of them. So you sometimes have mentions of like Dr. Wernicke, like he's still doing projects, he's not actually dead, and now we get to see him and how he's still alive. In which man's hooked up to a machine. <laughs> Like, man's, like, literally, literally at, like, the edge of his life. And he's literally spending it doing these insane experiments with all these people. And guess what he's doing right now? He's literally breaking down the entire process of how they were able to get the Wallbrider project to take off. And Murkoff took that research and decided, you know, to add the insane patient <coughs> variable to it. You see where I'm going with this? It's, you know, it's a whole, like, a lot like an, a, a corporation that, you know, fell apart almost, you know, more than 20 years ago at this point. And uh, unfortunately, because we can't actually leave, because Billy, who is actually the wall writer, uh, his name is Billy Hope, um, and he was the host of the wall writer, the first successful host, and the only, the only host for now, uh, in which he was actually able to take possession of the wall rider. Um, he doesn't attack Verniki because he's his creator, pretty much, so he thinks of him as a father. And you're on his turf right now. He knows exactly what you're up to. Like, he's a supernatural being, so, like, he's able to do things, like, he's able to, like, mess with your mind. Like, you'll actually see, like, certain effects happen, which, by the way, you may have noticed that, uh, for those that played this game, that there's no crack on the camera. That's because I'm playing the game on very low settings, and it actually takes out the crack from the camera huh. and the effect, too. So if you wanted a uh, better visibility um, and don't really like the camera effect, uh, just crank down the effects uh, setting all the way down to very low, and it'll get rid of it. For That's you. neat. So right now, we're going to run through different portions of this facility. We just passed the morphogenic engine. I didn't even make mention of it, but it's that, that was it. That big hunk of metal in the middle that looks like a... Huh. Well, 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 how can I say it? You know what? I've been playing Apex a lot. It reminds me of that, uh... That, that loot, uh... That loot sphere that has a lot of angles to it that you have to shoot off the drone. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that's shaped like that. And uh, we just passed the patient in there, who's Billy Hope. So I'm actually going to try to give you guys a good look at him. I don't usually do that, but why not? We, we give ourselves a moment. I, and I've actually bought myself a little bit of time with how fast we've been doing this. So, hey, there's Billy. He's not doing so good. And he's not going to do good soon. Uh, unfortunately, we have to kind of pull the plug on him if we want to leave because he's locked down the entire facility. Like, he's taking control of the entire facility. And if you somehow were able to escape... He will kill you. 
because he knows who steps in and out of the uh, entire asylum. So we have no choice. Huh. And uh, we got a bit of a stair, a bit of a stair climb right now. It's not as long as the uh, flight of stairs from Final Fantasy VII, but it's pretty long. All right. Uh, okay. There we go. A little bit of parkour. All right. Nice. Parkour. Nice. Billy's just all over the place. Like, he's making it seem like he's struggling to catch you, but he's actually just playing around with you. He actually has a childlike mind. Uh, so, yeah. Um, actually, uh, man, I, 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 I actually wanted to ask this uh, to you guys, uh, the host. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to show off something pretty funny in this section uh, after the run, if there's enough time. You probably have enough. You're it's looking a... underestimate right now. Alrighty. Uh, it's a really funny glitch, and it's called the Superman glitch. Also, we don't gotta make this jump. We could just jump off. Because he catches us! What a nice guy! What a nice guy, Billy! Look at him. He's just playing around with you, and then he just throws you to the floor. Like you're an action figure or something. I don't really know why he's doing that. He, he might really just be playing with his prey more than anything, more than actually just thinking you're a toy. Hmm. All right, so I did miss out on a uh, landing skip. There you go. Showed it to y'all. That's what usually happens. <laughs> and now we're going to pull the plug on Billy. And Miles here wants to make sure that he gets the footage. <laughs> Unfortunately, the problem is, is that at this point in time, the wall rider has gone pretty strong enough to where it, it's to where he's actually going to do something with Miles here. So what you so what's happening right now is that Miles is actually having the wall rider absorb into him. So he's now the host. I was gonna. I, I'm saying that for Dr. Vreniki right now, just because uh, he's not kind later on. Uh, actually, he's really rude with what he does after you do this for him. But uh, right now, we just gotta get out of here. So let's just get out of here. Um, so we're pretty much nearing the end of the run. We're just a few. We're literally like several steps away from the end. So I'll let you know when time's coming up. All right. But. Uh, there's some things I didn't get to talk about. Like, this category has changed in the past, like, more than five years it's been around. This category started off as a... was It started off as a category at first, and no, not many people ran it, so it actually got taken out. And when I started running it, it actually wasn't there, so myself and a few owners actually got it to be as a miscellaneous category to get it off the ground. And so many people worked on stuff. Like, we have actually had to uh, change rules on certain things. Like, there's actually a lot of ways you could skip certain portions and save more seconds. But we just cut them out because they skip certain lower points. Also, time's going up right now. All right, GG. Hey, wow. O only uh, 24 seconds off from my That's TV. really good. Uh, I'm really happy it turned out that way. Actually, wait, doesn't this use in game uh, time? Uh, yes, it does. So, I, actually, we probably could have, uh, <laughs> I actually probably could have got a TV. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look. Yeah, there's a way to find that out. Definitely find that out. Anyway, let's see the ending here. Um, if you do want to show off that one, uh, that one trick, you definitely can. I imagine I have a save for it. Yeah, that, of course. <laughs> so... Of course, because they kill Miles, which, by the way, uh, it's actually very weird as to how they kind of talked about Miles. Like, they confirmed that he was dead, but he's not actually dead because they t they uh, had they put up a tweet of it and then they deleted it like very quickly. So I don't know what's their deal on it. I think he's dead, honestly, because there's no way you're living from that dude. Yeah. Uh. But that's Outlast. Now, since we have some time, I actually want to show off the Superman glitch, yeah. which you get to see in runs like no out of bounds, any percent, 
And uh, let's see, I have a lot of saves to pick from, so I'm gonna need a second to see which one's the right one. All right, while well, we're waiting for that, though, while we're waiting for that to get that set up, uh, if anyone does want to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where, where can they find you? Uh, I am on Twitch as twitch.tv slash the dark and rose. Uh, I'm also on Twitter as, uh, also at the Dark and Rose. Uh, I do variety streams. I also speedrun games. Uh, I actually picked up this game again for the, uh, for this run. And honestly, like, I'm just so happy to play it again. Like, I forgot how great this run was. Like, uh, the past week I've been playing it, I've just been so giddy playing it. Like, it's, it's been such a joy to play it. Uh, you know what, actually, we're already almost there. We'll just... We'll, we'll just we'll just play it off a little bit here so the superman jump is a little hard to get so i'm only gonna try it a few times but uh to give you the context of it you have to run all the way back down so that you jump into that trigger for the cutscene with the wall rider just uh grabbing you with that jump but there is a way to actually skip all of that and I am a little rusty with it, uh, so I'm going to try my best to do I it. I think I know the jump you're talking about, and it is a cool one. It's a really good jump, but uh, it's a little tough to get right. And the uh, the game kind of tries to be a little like finicky with it, because it'll try to push you off of this. Okay, so you want to uh, get on top of this I got ledge. a fun one for you. Sprint mm -hmm. jump backwards. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I don't know why. So... It works every time. It's so stupid, <laughs> and it's one of the only things I know about this game. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, this game's not playing nice with me right now. You can see it, like, it, it tries to force you out of there, because it knows you're not supposed to be on top of the railing. Yeah, it's like right when you land but, on uh, it, you just sprint around backwards, you usually get if you're on the railing. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. Oh my god. Yep. See, uh, this is a uh, yeah. I'm pretty rusty with this. And then for so. the second one, you could just face the rail, and you should be able to land on that one. It's weird that I that I get to tell the runner uh, the tip on a. Uh... Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, for the all right. Uh, for the for the other one, um, jump left immediately once you're on the railing. Run slightly forward. Uh, sprint jump left. Uh oh, I don't want. Oh, <laughs> for the second yeah, jump, uh, jump like facing towards the rail. Like I, I, I how you've been trying. All right, like that, and then just. All and right, the third jump, uh... slide forward, and then sprint left jump. Oh, you got it! Never mind, and you got Superman it. You got jump. It. <laughs> there it is. When you when you watch someone do that strat, they do it so oh, yeah. quick. Like, it is crazy. Like, I made, I made it look really hard, but some of them make it look like there's no effort put into it. Oh, hey, I get to answer uh, my usual question, by the way. It happened in chat. Uh, no, this run is live. Chat is pre-recorded, however. Uh, chat is right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Chat, chat's pre-recorded. Correct. But the run is live, though. <laughs> but... All right, yeah, that's it for Outlast. Uh, thank you before guys so end, much though, for Before watching. we end, I do want to remind you, uh, for anyone who did miss the link, uh, you can find them there. And two, um, you have any shoutouts you want to give? Uh, oh, man, like, I, I, I like to give shoutouts to some of the runners that I used to run with. Like, it's, uh, I, I'll be honest, like, it's, it was more than a year since I last ran this game and put up a time on the board. I'm not going to lie, you're making me want to run this game again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like there's there's people like Streaming Fire and some other runners of Benath. Uh, some people that like don't even have times anymore on the board that I like I can't remember their names off the top of my head. But uh, like they they were runners like when I was running this game and they would always show up in my chat and we would just have a good time just joking around with the game. And when Outlast Two was coming out, it was the same way. Like we were always talking about it. Um, I also want to give shout outs to. Uh, I'm gonna give shouts to my friends, uh, Max, Dan, uh, uh, some of the some of the other guys. Uh, we have a group known as Legion 205, but we kind of retire that name. But uh, those guys are awesome. They always push me to do things. Like I, honestly, there's a lot of things that like I always feel like fearful of or nervous about. And I will be honest, like 
I'm I'm pretty like I'm pretty anxious guy. Like I, I tend to stress out a lot and I was pretty worried about this run not turning out good, but it was just a lot of reassurance and just, you know, keep going at it. You did a great job. And uh Yeah, like they oh man, it was yeah, it was just I'm I'm happy that the run turned out good. Like I'm I'm happy it turned out the way they did. <laughs> All right. Well, I do want to thank you again for the run. You did a great job. Uh, it was very fun being able to join you for this run, and it was a great run to show off. Uh, that being said, though, we are going to uh, be right back. We're going to be getting uh, the next and final run of the show all nice and ready. Uh, before we do go, I just want to show you a quick reminder to uh, everyone that we're going to be taking a quick wellness break, so make sure you stand up, touch your toes, get food, get water, do what you need. We're going to be right back very quick. As well, any subs, gifted subs, and all the like are always appreciated during the interim between GDQ events, because this is how we keep the show going. So, as always, appreciated. All right, we're going to be right back. All right. Later, guys. All right, we are back. So to conclude our episode of Hospitals, we have one final run. I uh, last was a great time. I love watching through that. But I know uh, another game I was always a big fan of, uh, just in general ways, was uh, Left 4 Dead. Uh, this one's kind of weird because I do know um, there's many iterations of the speedrunning community for this. There's many different versions at this point, I guess. And uh, I guess another weird thing is that as a hospital, there's really only the one level. Besides that, though, Left Enough on Impact, that's going to be fitting for this episode. Anyway, uh, up next we have Left 4 Dead with Waifu. So, take it away. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I am Waifu. I speed on a lot of games, and uh, one of those games I speed on is Left 4 Dead. You may have seen my Left 4 Dead 2 run at the last uh, GQ event, and I'm joined with my homie and world record holder of the category I'll be running, Eurus. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I'm yours, and I'm going to help Waifu commentate the run. And I'm going to need that help commentating because this run is crazy. Zombies are crap, <laughs> right. especially in Left 4 Dead 1. They're way worse than Left 4 Dead 2. So there's going to be a little bit of differences if you've seen that run. Uh, a little bit of a shorter run and a nice little unique glitch that's uh, unique to the first game. All right, well, on your mark, I feel free whenever you want to uh, just let some time again, and all you. Perfect, cool. So an important distinction before we start is I'm going to be playing on a campaign server. Um, that's because we're doing a category um, called Speed Glitch, and Eurus and I will explain Speed Glitch kind of when it comes up, but basically the category is original campaigns, so the first four campaigns that launch with the game. Uh, speed Glitch, meaning you're allowed to use the Speed Glitch, and uh, solo, I meaning I'm going to do it by myself. Um, and you'll see why I do it by myself in just a second, because uh, this is what happens to my friends when we play this game together. Right at the start, we uh, give them the blicky, and they're gone, though. That's time to start now, actually, well, my bad. Yeah. Did you, did you kill all three of them at, at once? Yeah, so in Left 4 Dead 1, the... The teammates, they kind of get obliterated by team damage. You get way more team damage in this game than you do in Left 4 Dead 2. Huh. And uh, that allows you to just absolutely annihilate the teammates. They actually like have ragdoll physics and everything, you know, flying. It's pretty awesome. Um, but basically, if you don't know much about Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead or Left 4 Dead 2, it's level-based. Each You have a couple of different campaigns that you're going to do, and each campaign has a certain amount of levels. To beat the level, you go to the safe room and leave. Um, once everyone that's alive is in the safe room, then the level progresses. And we can kind of subvert this a little bit by killing our teammates so we don't have to wait for them to catch up because the AI companions are very slow. Um, so, you know, in a speedrun, slow is bad, so we must kill the things that are slow. Um, uh, I also realized uh, difficulty change uh, is because uh, if your difficulty is an expert, then you can deal a lot more uh, team damage. So you can just kill the bots faster. And then change difficulty back to easy to play the level. So it's way easier. Francis? Yep. And uh, that's, that's going to be uh, the any difficulty part of the category. So now we're making our way through the second map of No Mercy. And this, this one's a little bit scary. Um, 
Hopefully, depending on whether or not we get a tank here, we might see a few different ways of skipping this crescendo event. Um, okay, cool, we did get a tank. So I can show off some unique tech to left for another one. So, there is a tank. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't kill me. Um, <laughs> it turns out, if you're standing on top of interactable objects and you spam melee, oh my god, okay, we're fine. <laughs> and you spam melee, um, every time you melee an interactable object, it stores momentum for some reason. I don't know exactly how it works, but, um, and if you use the scroll wheel, I have one of those pay to win cheater mice, so I just unlock the scroll wheel. Um, and you scroll while meleeing, it actually hits a melee for each item in your inventory. So depending on how many items you have in your inventory, that's why I picked up the pills actually, um, it hits faster. And once you have enough hits, then when you jump, it's actually gonna give you that velocity. I mean, you can use that to skip that crescendo event right there. I got really lucky because the tank was really close to going me. Um, and he gave me just enough time to get enough height to skip that section. So I guess uh, I, have, well, I have rapid fire questions right now. Like I have like, I think two, I guess two. Two to away. Uh, all right, one, the speed glitch, can it only go up or can you go like horizontal at all? Uh, it only goes up. We'll see it on the next map primarily. Uh, so same thing as applying here. The store actually has health. And if you beat the heck out of it, <laughs> you beat the devil out of this door by scrolling weapons, it'll eventually break. And this is a lot faster than doing the crescendo. It's also safer. Um, I don't have a throwable, which is kind of bad. Um, it's going to make it so that the melees are a little bit slower. But it's overall okay. So I actually remember doing that glitch back when I used to play like Left 4 Dead versus like many years ago. Um, I'm assuming that you guys have to down patch this. Uh, yeah, there's only like two major patches of this game: the release patch and then the the patch that adds the the rest of the campaigns with the DLC. Um, speed glitch does not work on the all campaigns patch, um, so we are playing on a down patch version. But there's only like two versions, so there there are a couple things like the the interactable boost where you melee it, that's exclusive to this version. Um, and there's like a couple of skips that don't work on the other versions, but we'll bring those up when when we get to them. And then last one uh, for right now. Yep, uh, okay. So since, since you were on Left 4 Dead 2 and 1, like are there any remarkable differences between the two outside of melee weapons? Or do you, is it mainly like if you can do one, you can be pretty good at the other? <laughs> no worries about that. That's fine. Um, yeah, so that's, this is like a good time to note that. So in Left 4 Dead 1, uh, the physics works exactly the same, so you're going to still have bunny hopping. You still have to use a single input to bunny hop because this is the way the game registers inputs and stuff. Um, but there are a few no, notable no. differences. The shotguns in this game are like way stronger. Um, you can The dual wheel pistols are also like totally broken. They're like really, really strong. The big ones, though, are there's no tanks, or there's no chargers, jockeys, spitters, stuff like that. Um, obviously, less maps, no melee weapons. But the really big one is the way that tanks work. Tanks are um, way, way more dangerous in Left 4 Dead 1 than they are in Left 4 Dead 2. They're more aggressive. They'll hit you harder and faster. Um, and you can actually get more than one tank spawn per map which is like absolutely terrifying. And if you get too far away from tanks, they'll teleport, kind of like the AI companions do. So in Left 4 Dead 1, the real big scary part is the tanks mostly. And the common infected also are way more aggressive and uh, they just absolutely swarm you. So the common infected and the tanks, those are the two, the two big ones. Common infected are like a million times more annoying, and the tanks are a lot more dangerous. Yeah, and, and then imagine putting these two together <laughs> when you get stuck on commons and there's also a tank. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, that, that, that's, that's the worst thing that can happen, just getting surrounded by commons when the, the tank hits you. So you guys saw that I died there. Uh, that's that's gonna happen for sure. Um, Left 4 Dead is a very volatile run. There's a lot of RNG. Like so many things in the game are random. Where enemies spawn, where special enemies spawn, where tanks spawn, what objects spawn, what items spawn. So 
I'm gonna try to show off the speed glitch here. I don't, I would usually have a Molotov, but I should be able to kill myself on some commons. And that should give me speed glitch. So I have the net graph up at the bottom right. So you're gonna see a bunch of numbers. The furthest bottom right number, the 100 seconds, just above that, there's gonna be another number. Oh yeah, I definitely got speed glitch. <laughs> you're gonna immediately see what speed glitch does and why it's named that. Um, so the that number there that was 30.2 is actually the game's like run rate. It's like the tick rate, how often it detects for inputs and stuff. Um, also how fast the game is running. There's three different methods, uh, or there's three different types of speed glitch. There's 32, 34, and 36. Uh, the higher the number, the faster the game runs. So right now the game is just running at like almost one third times speed uh, increased. And so that's everything. That's movement speed. Oh God. Oh, I'm, I'm deceased, I think. We'll see. Maybe yours can explain speed glitch. Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, for some reason, sometimes uh, if you uh, reset a level, there's a chance that the, the, the game will start processing takes faster, which, like, uh, according to NetGraph, will increase the tick, tick rate, but normally increasing, increasing the tick rate doesn't like, speed up the game like that, but it just... Uh, the game processes the same amount of ticks, but in, in uh, like way faster. That's why the the game just speeds up. Like overall, the the whole game just like uh, just literally at times. As you can tell, that is gonna make the combat way harder, <laughs> especially when you run into tanks because, uh, you know, tanks are already fast and scary. But imagine when the game's running way faster than it's supposed to be. Also, that obviously is gonna make b hopping harder because the timing is gonna be different and whatnot. Um, it's only really useful on, so the way to trigger it is to kill yourself at the beginning of a map, and then depending on a couple of circumstances, you're going to get different types of speed glitch, 32, 34, 36. Um, it's primarily useful for maps where you have to wait for stuff, like finales, or this elevator. Oh my god. Oh, I got it. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. So I'm gonna be late. Don't kill me, please, Oliver. Did I make it? Uh, no, I don't didn't. think so. Oh. Comments? Do I have to die now? The question is, how do I die? <laughs> oh. Um, okay. There we go. Comments I, I think me. that's that's good. Cool. So Leopard one, especially with speed glitch makes it really, really scary because like you don't have time to do stuff. You know, you're just kind of like just YOLO in it. Um, right there, I was trying to do a skip where you can get caught in the elevator and that'll actually skip waiting for the elevator doors to open and it saves about 15 seconds when you're not doing a speed glitch. Um, but I was just a little bit too late and so I got stuck out of bounds, <laughs> which is basically a soft lock. So this time I'm gonna play it safe. Um, hopefully I don't get a tank. This is the reason why we do No Mercy first, because No Mercy is absolutely just a nightmare of a level because of the speed glitch, and um, you just have to wait for this to happen. So if you get a tank, that's like really, really bad news. Um, so hopefully, I'm just gonna camp this corner and hope I don't die. <laughs> At the very least, we do get more time in the hospital. Exactly. I'm making the theme work. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah I, I wanted to also explain that uh, like the, if you get a speed glitch, uh, then the, there are like a certain speeds uh, of, of the speed glitch uh, that will like always happen. It's like not random. It's uh, if you do it on, for example, on this map, you'll always get the the fastest possible speed glitch, and it, it's always gonna be the same speed. And I, I, I really have no idea how does it work, why there are different speed glitches, like different speeds, and why do they even happen? It's the, the, This whole speed glitch thing is just a, a big, big mystery. Yeah, it's, it's a meme of a glitch, honestly. Like, 
it's the perfect glitch for a speedrun, right? Like, just make everything faster forehead, but oh my god, does it make the game really weird and sometimes extremely difficult. Runs already hard enough when the game's not running faster. There's also a thing that on some levels, you will just enter the map with a speed glitch already. It's oh like... Tank. Is that a tank? Oh, yeah, there's a... This is fine, this is fine. <laughs> so, yeah, um, <laughs> you, you can sometimes uh, just enter the the map and it will already be with speed glitch, uh, but it's always going to be the slowest one for for whatever reason. It's always going to be 32 on the Nightcraft. Uh, and faster speed glitches are only achievable by re resetting the level. For, ex for example, uh, la like now, yeah, Wife is gonna restart the level and it's gonna have speed glitch. But now it's not gonna be uh, the, the fastest speed glitch, the 36 speed glitch, it's gonna be 34 speed glitch. And uh, I, I have no idea why this happens. Like, the No Mercy 4, uh, the, the previous map, the, the only like. Oh you can. The tanks today are insane. Oh. <laughs> they can make, make him jump down to his death. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> See you later. He just dude. leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, tanks are not that smart. So, all I'm understanding here is that Left 4 Dead 1, you hit like a truck, they hit like a truck, and everything comes at you at once. Basically, yeah. Cool. No jockeys, like though, so, you know, feels good, man. Better or worse is the question. I, don't, I think it's a lateral change. Honestly, like, I run both of them, and Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 just both have their different they are different things that make them better or worse. Left 4 Dead 1 is definitely easier to optimize because there's less that can go wrong. But it definitely, I think it has the propensity to get way worse than Left 4 Dead 2, if that makes sense. Like, when things go bad, they go really bad. Is there a reason that you I, I had think... to uh, revive them and then kill them again? Uh, yeah, so in this game, the survivors are always going to respawn from the closets on the finales. So it's faster to kill them, get to the finale, start it, and then they're automatically going to let themselves out. So you want to kill them again. And this is because we're going to be doing what's called a god spot. So right now, I'm in a spot where the enemy AI can't path to me. They don't really know where I am. So um, this is going to cause them to just like chill out and get lost. And then eventually they'll despawn. And that counts as a kill. Uh, finales where you're holding out, they progress based on kill counts. So you kill like two hordes, then tank, then two hordes, uh, and then another tank, and then the, the arrival comes. Uh, this is where speed glitch helps a lot because if the game is running faster and you're just doing an auto scroller then it's going to save a lot of time right but if there are ai around the friendly ai the commons are going to pass to them and then they will despawn so you need to kill them so right now it's probably uh, a oh, good sometimes the infected will not despawn if they are really close to you so, um, my question for uh, both of you here is, so how did you both get into running Left 4 Dead and, I guess, Left 4 Dead 2 as well? Well, I was just, uh, just browsing speedrun.com looking for a game to run, and, uh, my girlfriend at the time showed me Left 4 Dead, and I was like, wow, this run looks really sick, and then I just tried it out, and I was like, this is really hard <laughs> like like usually i could pick up a game and get like a good time in like a month or two but that was not gonna happen in left for dead and and i like that because i like really challenging speed runs um takes like forever to learn but guys really really satisfying and I, I like that since everything is so random every run's gonna be different and that makes it really dynamic and you can just kind of roll with the punches don't necessarily always have to go for a pb like just doing a no reset run is usually a good time what about you, Yuris? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's just a thing in this game, but... Maybe, like, after two years of work, you can get close to top times, and then you can finally, like, 
tell yourself, damn, yes, after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> not not months, it's years. <laughs> And there's the chapter. All right. We did No Mercy. So there's four campaigns in this run. Um, you can do them in any order that you want, but we want to do No Mercy first because it is the hardest campaign for sure. Uh, and then we're going to go do Death Toll, which this is just a personal choice. I like to do Death Toll second. Uh, for some reason in Death Toll, you almost always load in with a 32 speed glitch, which kind of sucks because this is one of the more B-hop heavy maps in the run. And... If you're practiced at fee hopping with the normal no speed glitch, and then you get tossed into 32 speed glitch, and it's like, okay, now fee hop, um, it's gonna be a bit hard. So hopefully I can show off some cool hops, but speed glitch makes that hard, so we'll see. Yeah, th th this is one of these maps when you just load in and you always have the, the, the slowest speed glitch, the, the 32 one. So actually, I actually have a question, because um, I know I, I've watched you personally, Wipe, I've watched you run uh, a lot of the Left 4 Dead 1 maps and Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, do some of the skips carry over between the two games, or are they like wildly different between the two games like that? Uh, it just depends. It, the really interesting thing is there's a lot of skips in Left 4 Dead 1 that are patched out in the newer update that you would do for all campaigns. Right. But those same skips are not patched out in Left 4 Dead 2. Weird. It's, it's really, it's like when they ported the maps over, they used the earlier versions of them and never translated the patches. Even, even not on the current patch, but like the current patch before that. Uh, that's really awesome. That's so good. Aww. Save from doors right there, man. Come on, why'd you have to do that? I got greedy. I voted expert early. So I'm doing a thing here called using a map command. So you can use console commands to switch maps. And uh, in this patch of the game, if you use a console command to switch maps, it just skips the intro cinematic. So it's really nice because then you don't have to watch it every time. Yeah, the, the, the cutscene skip is also fixed for newer versions. Uh, that is only for the old version. Left 4 Dead can be very brutal, as I am certainly showing off here. Left 4 Dead 1 especially. I think uh, it's one of those runs where it's easier to optimize, but it's definitely more brutal than the sequel. Yeah, like, I, I, I think in Left 4 Dead 2, like, there's always like an attempt. Like You can attempt to do something uh, that will prevent you from dying. Uh, in Left 4 Dead 1, like, if the game wants you dead, like you will be dead. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like there's less wiggle room, right? Like In Left 4 Dead 2, there, there, you have more options. You have melee weapons, you got adrenaline and stuff like that. Um, or backup strats, but in Left 4 Dead 1, some comments catch a hold of you. Those those fools are grabbing your ankle and they're taking you to the ground, dude. You're you're going down with them, right? But hey, no jockeys, so <laughs> better game. Yeah, it's just, you can sometimes just have a map where there's just, just there's just no tanks, but sometimes the game the game can just throw two tanks. Randomly. Yeah, yeah let's, let's hope we don't see any of the two tank maps. So th in this map, we're going to show off one of the main differences between Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2 skips. Is a lot of the skips in Left 4 Dead 2 are pretty basic. Maybe they require a common jump or something, um, which we'll see a little bit more of in a bit here. But in Left 4 Dead 1, most of the skips are actually based in bunny hopping. Um, hitting like very precise bunny hop lines or... or some crouch hops to jump across a gap is way more common in this game than it is in Left 4 Dead 2. So we're gonna do one here. We can skip this crescendo event if we bunny hop across here and onto that pipe. I'm gonna need a pipe bomb for later, so I'm gonna grab one of his backup. But there's always two there. Very nice, got it first try. So you need to hit, oh my Christ, please, sir, calm down, <laughs> thank you. All right, you need to hit like a pretty, precise B hop there and hit the strafe so that you can go around the there's a yes you guys see that? Is that tank? That's not yeah, good. That's not good. That's, that's not good. Uh excuse me, sir. I just wanna clear these commons just in, just in case, you know, I don't wanna get I don't wanna get stuck. Excuse me, sir. 
I got a speed run to do. Oh, I, <laughs> I totally forgot that Hanks could like punch out the, the pillars. Yeah, I honestly game. didn't know that until he just did it, so I'm glad that it didn't kill me. I, I don't think it kills. Yeah, it's not like a car, I don't think. Cars will instantly hey, like, kill you, though. Yeah, the, the tanks uh, can, pu can sometimes punch uh, punch things into you, and like uh, some of them, uh, like cars and dumpsters, uh, are, are just instantly killing you. It, it's just an instant down. And it's, so this, um, yeah. this map has a really cool uh, little glitch on it. Or I don't even know if you consider it a glitch, but... Sure. Something really cool. So this is the famous map with the dude in the church who's crazy and won't let you in. And then he turns into a special infected. Spoilers. Um, but it turns out all that you need to do to trigger him to start the horde is to use a vocalizer command. So you can just trigger the audio dialogue from your player character at the beginning of the map and it'll start the horde. So it's essentially an auto scroller. You're just waiting for the door to open. But instead of having to go to the end of the game, or at the end of the map, and then starting the auto-scroll, you can start it right as soon as you leave the safe room. And so this level just turns into killing enough commons for the door to open, and then just getting there, basically. Huh. There's also the, the, the weird thing that uh, it was... Uh, in this game, if you kill commons, it, it makes the... This even uh, progress faster, but it's not a thing in Left 4 Dead 2. In Left 4 Dead 2, there's just a set timer. Uh, I think it's one minute thirty seconds, uh, and you just can't can't speed it up. It's just one minute thirty seconds of waiting. In, in this game, it's just hard that you need to go. Or an optional tank. Uh, that should be an issue, right? Nah, we're, we're chilling. We're chilling. Hey, Boomer. Goodbye. Boom dia. All right, Pog. So this <laughs> map, we're going to show off a common jump. And a common jump is where you jump on top of a common's head. And if you jump at the right time, their climbing speed will be added to your jumping height. And so that's going to let us skip a section. But in Left 4 Dead 1, this is incredibly inconsistent. Left 4 Dead 2, you can do this like all day and it's totally free. But in Left 4 Dead 1, it's it's like really, really finicky. So we absolutely need a pipe bomb for this. Oh, another another tank. Awesome. Um, We're getting a lot of tanks. Yeah, there's a lot of tanks in Left 4 Dead 1. <laughs> we haven't seen two on one map yet, so count ourselves lucky, I guess. So wait, with the two on one map, yeah, I said I know you said two can spawn. Can they stack? I think so. Yeah, they, they can for sure stack. Oh. I, I, I'm pretty sure I met with a situation where uh, the tank was like spawned at the start of the map, and then after getting far enough to the end, at the end of the map, uh, he warped to this to the survivors, and there was also another tank like, waiting at the end of the map. So there were two tanks. Yeah, you get to the safe room, and there's two tanks. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you just in case. Goodbye. I didn't want that fighting me in the butt later. Hey, but that, that switch my, m might have as well been uh, a tank. <laughs> yeah, so it could have been a tank. That could have been really bad. You got lucky. All right, so we're in the finale of Death Toll already. Uh, this this map has a really cool thing because while Left 4 Dead uh, 1 has came out earlier in Left 4 Dead 2, in the speedrunning sense, not a lot of people went back to Left 4 Dead 1. It, it was honestly more like a tradition of, oh, like I got world record in Left 4 Dead 2, so now I guess I should go do Left 4 Dead 1. And that was like pretty much anyone that, everyone that ran the game or something similar to that, with some exceptions, of course. But um, so Left 4 Dead 1 actually ended up not being nearly as optimized until pretty recently when some of the runners decided to go and run it. And when they did, they found a new god spot there, it used to not be faster to do a god spot on this map. It's faster to actually just use the bots and kill all the, the commons as they spawn. But now, there is a pretty good god spot that uh, saves a little bit of time. So hopefully I'll show that off. If I don't die because commons are everywhere and they're terrible left to one, please God, let me go. For love of God, thank you, Tank. 
please. Comments. I beg. They are so persevering. I know, it's insane. Left red, left comments suck. Excuse I'm also me, wondering, um, is the M16 any good or mainly just shotgun all day? Ah, one second. Take your time. Help. These, uh, these comments are <laughs> definitely giving you the business. And there are more inside. For speedrunning, uh, other shotguns are way better than rifles. They're also way easier to aim. If oh my you, God. Have, <laughs> you have quite a bit of uh, bullet spread, uh, it's easier to kill commons and also other stuff. Okay. And in Left 4 Dead 1, uh, auto shotgun is surprisingly a pretty long range weapon. Like, surprisingly. Oh, the shotgun can uh, help killing smokers too. Like from 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 some distance. They're right, now trying to kill the other that guys are best. Yes, but quite uh, a difficult one. Hop. You take your bunny hopping over to the roof. Yeah, the commons can't pass you on the roof, so I leave the the AI alive because obviously. If you're trying to kill commons and you can't hit the spot, they're going to protect you and make it easier. If you don't have them alive, it's going to be a nightmare to try to get on the roof. So I can get on the roof and then be like, thanks for helping me, and just switch to expert and then kill them. But this behop is hard. The upside is it's not much slower if you miss the god spot a whole bunch, as long as the AI actually have guns and don't decide to use their pistols the whole time, because they're protecting. Oh, yeah, so, so, sometimes the boss just glitch out and they, they refuse to pick up weapons. And they, they, they're just using the uh, really bad pistols. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this B-Hop is just like, hitting uh, hitting the slope just in the right way, so you get enough speed to get on. Thanks, Hunter. So, friendly Hunter. Okay, this is fine. At least we got up before the first tank. It's not too bad. Oh. Yeah, but so this is relatively new. Because I guess no one thought to try to B-hop across this rock. It's also a really hard jump. You, you can't really see much, and you have to hit the slope to give you the extra speed to make it to the roof. Basically, uh, previously, uh, like, people knew about this god spot, but previously it was really hard to get to because uh, you had to use a pie bump to uh, to get on top of the commons and to do, do the common jump uh, from the other side. But uh, it was really unreliable uh, for some reason. And uh, people just didn't want to do it. Now as you have the, the bunny hop, uh, you, you get a lot of a lot of shots. Uh, you can only have one pipe bomb at, at a time. You can have like a lot of them. Uh, it's just way better to just have uh, almost infinite, infinite tries for, for the beehive. Then you can also do it like yeah, it's a, it's a lot nicer. during the event. So you might be thinking, well, you know, this is a finale. You're just waiting. Why didn't you get speed glitch? On some maps, it's just not worth it. Like, it takes so long to set up in, in some instances, especially, like, this map, I didn't have a Molotov. And you have, can get a lot of bunny hops on the way to the finale. The and if you're not going to be able to hit those bunny hops because you have speed glitch, then it's just not worth it. And I probably would have died because I got that tank if I had speed glitch because it would just be really hard to survive. So it, it only saves, like, maybe 20 seconds on a finale to have like a 3-4 speed glitch, right? So it's not like, it's not like a huge deal. You don't like, it's not gonna lose like a minute or something if you don't speed glitch. Yeah, that's also a, a really weird thing when uh, you, you get way higher chance to get a speed glitch if if you like start on the center map. So like, if you start the run on No Mercy, this is your first map, then uh, you have really high chance to uh, get a speed glitch, but on later maps, the the chance just drops for, for some reason. Yeah, it's really weird. Also, something interesting to note, um, you can only get speed glitch if you're playing on a campaign server like I have been. Um, you can't get it if you play single player, 
However, once you get speed glitch, it like infects your game. And even if you play single player after that, is, is if you haven't restarted the game yet, you could still get it. It's really weird. Like once it happens once, it's just there forever until you restart your game. So if you were trying to do the non-speed glitch category, you would just uh, play on single player mode. I think it's connected with the, the way the game works is uh, that if you create the server on uh, the campaign mode, then like, the, the game remembers the, the server that you chose and then creates the like same server, the campaign server, even though you chose a single player on the map server. Mm -hmm. I, I think it just... The, the server is just carried over uh, until you just restart the game and you create like an actual single player or map server. Yep, yep. And this is so this is Blood Harvest, which is the third of four campaigns that we're going to be doing today. And uh, it's got the hardest skip in it, I think. It's the bridge skip, which is going to be on the next map. So that's something to look forward to. You get to see me miss a B hop like 20 times in a row. Or uh, maybe I do it first try. Who knows? It's, it's RNG, probably. You know, it's like the rest of the game. It's random. We just do a little gaming first, though. And hit some B hops. Die to a tank, you know? Just left for dead things. Excuse me, sir. I got speed runs to do. Oh yeah, yeah that's uh, also the the free campaign of the run, and it's uh, half of the run is almost over. Like it's already over, just over the half now. Yeah, original campaigns is really short. It's only four campaigns, uh, which you know, in main campaigns Left 4 Dead 2 you have five campaigns, and the difference is that in Left 4 Dead 2 there are a lot more maps that incentivize having really good B hops, where that doesn't matter as much in in this game. It obviously, still matters because going fast is good. But um, it's not going to be as huge a deal in this game as it is in the game like Left 4 Dead 2. And also, the all campaigns category in Left 4 Dead 2 is about like two and a half hours long, whereas the all campaigns category in this game is only like an hour, because it only adds two campaigns, and one of those campaigns only has two maps, um, as opposed to like the 13 or 14 in Left 4 Dead 2. But in this game. All campaigns is way worse than original campaigns. <laughs> Specifically because one of the campaigns that you do is the sacrifice, and there is a trick on the sacrifice that is so inconsistent, it's insane. So uh, I wouldn't imagine seeing an all campaigns run at, at like a GDQ or something for a long time, because that, that run is quite a mess. So coming up here is the trick. Um, there's this big bridge that you're supposed to drive a train into. It'll break and you can climb up there towards the safe room, but you can actually do a little bit of parkour, reminiscent of the coaster skip in Left 4 Dead 2. We do a little, little b-hopping and we fail it. But you have to hit two crowd shops here. So two tick perfect tricks in a row. Second try, I'm a god oh, here. You, go. um, you have to strafe around the pole there and bounce off the second one. Getting the momentum from the slope gives you just enough to gap all the way across the bridge, skipping, having to uh, start the crescendo there. It, it actually doesn't save like a huge amount of time, but it, it's a really cool trick. Um, getting a second try is not bad. Uh, it's really hard. The depth perception is a bit weird because you're bunny hopping on a downward slope. That's also an invisible platform. And you also don't uh, risk getting stuck on the hard like If you start even... Like, yeah, it, in theory, it's, it's safer, right? So... Comments, please, please, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Yeah, imagine left for that one, but with the melee cooldown. <laughs> oh my god. That would be a nightmare. That would be a nightmare. Ooh, ladder stall. Gamer. So we're gonna do a little skip here as well. Lots of the skips in this game are really interesting because they're not like, you don't like go out of bounds, you don't do any crazy tech, you kind of just. Sometimes you just walk up to a wall and jump and then you skip like a whole thing because they didn't didn't bother to make sure that you couldn't do that. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, that's a classic. 
This is good. Classic and tank. <laughs> this is really good. I'm definitely not gonna die. Sir? I urge you to reconsider. Miss? This is fine. Aiming. Okay, this <laughs> this was extremely scary because uh, this rock going over was like the the last place I would expect it to like to fly. All right, I'm gonna try to get speed glitch here. If it doesn't happen in like two tries, I'll just move on. But you can get yourself off this bridge. For some reason, it seems like kind of inconsistent whether or not you get speed glitch after eating yourself off this bridge, but I'll try it like twice. I, so I didn't get it there. I can tell because the neck graph. Yeet. So if I do or don't get it, oh well, we'll go from here. Did I? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh well, that's fine. That's fine. Don't want to spend too much time trying to get it, especially if I end up dying because I got it. But yeah, the further you are into the run, the less likely you are to get speed glitched. So it's one of those things that doesn't change as much of the run as you might anticipate it to, considering what it actually does. But it's just so circumstantial that it doesn't end up being that different. My, my speed glitch PB is actually slower than my non-speed glitch PB, for example. Because I haven't done as many runs, and it's harder to finish runs that use speed glitch because it's easier to die. Oh, yes. Classic That's tank. Hard. Yeet! I'm really glad that that rock didn't hit me. He's fine. Oh my god, dude. Blood Harvest is a nightmare. <laughs> Please, let me go. Please, sir, I can't see anything. No, bad hunter. Please, I beg you. Common stuck. Common surfing. Oh my god, oh what my is god. happening? <laughs> what was... This, this is fine. This is fine. All according to plan. I, I planned for this in my estimate. Yeah, I might get speed glitch now, so... Upsides, upsides. Uh, uh, Unlucky. Maybe not. No speed glitch. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to kill yourself at the beginning of the map either. Sometimes when you die, you just get speed glitch. But I'm not that lucky. As we can see, I'm obviously not that lucky. The tank spawns today are sick. This is so sad. Just to see the that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tank. I would that say was the that. That's what record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say that. Um... Hey, look, we got speed glitch. I would say that. Oh, hey. At least we got an early tank so that we don't get a tank later, but this is Left 4 Dead 1, so that doesn't mean anything. We still get a tank later. Yeah. It, it, it seems like. Uh, if uh, if it's not the first campaign of the run, then you have like 50-50 chance to get speed glitch. Mm -hmm. Hey, it was all also, intended, intentional. Now he has speed glitch. <laughs> now he's gonna be faster. We're saving time. But the funny thing is, uh, like, if Waifu like died again on this level, it would he would have like 95% chance to get even faster speed glitch. <laughs> So every time we die, we're just saving time, dude. It's intentional, I swear. <laughs> speed, speed glitch is, is brutal. Left 4 Dead 1 is brutal. It's, hard, it's a hard game. It's okay, though. My surprisingly, it's uh, also easier to learn. Left yeah, then Left 4 Dead 2 definitely, I think, is way easier to learn. Look at him just lined up here. I'm gonna sleep over. Didn't end the way most sleepovers end, though. So I'm gonna sit myself like Harry Potter here at the stairwell. 
and uh, they're not going to be able to track me because this is another god spot. It's one of the better ones in the game. The really scary part is smokers sometimes make, make no sound, and they can spawn at the top of the stairwell here. And if you have speed glitch and they have no sound, uh, you better have some sick flicks because if they their tongue even touches you, since you're in this spot, you'll get stuck. And even if you free yourself, I'm pretty sure you die because <laughs> you're in a stuck spot. I might be wrong about that, but uh, it definitely like instantly grabs you, whereas normally you get a little bit of leeway to uh, shoot him afterwards. I really can't remember what's where the the uh, things that ha had to be done for it. I, I think it's just getting like being close to the wall, so like a socket that like can't pull you like through the ground, just like instantly. Yeah, it just instantly grabs you and doesn't let you doesn't slide at all. Like, it's probably to prevent you from going through walls and stuff when a smoker grabs you. If only they did that with chargers and left the zero. Yeah, I, I think I forgot to explain. Uh, why waifu waits uh, with killing the bots? Uh, like after starting the event? It's because uh, if you kill the bots too early, they might still respawn in the closet and you will have to like kill them again. So that's why it's better to wait uh, a bit of time and then kill them so they, they don't respawn in the closet again for sure. Exactly, because the commons, they're just like your teammates in regular Left 4 Dead, you know, you either kick them or you kill them. This is how Left 4 Dead pubs work, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't be Left 4 Dead without a little team killer. I think that this even is like one of the most random ones. Sometimes you just don't get any spawns around you, but sometimes you'll get it. There are just gonna be a lot of comments that will just refuse to despawn and spawn all those time. Yeah, so even though you're basically waiting for the enemies to despawn, they're, when they spawn is still random, and if they spawn further away from you, they're gonna despawn faster, and that's gonna make it faster. As well as tanks, where they spawn is random, and if they spawn in a spot where they're running when they die, that's gonna make their death animation a little bit faster. It's gonna save like five seconds each time, which is not a whole lot, but this game actually gets surprisingly optimized considering how random it is. And you know, five seconds, you know, adds up fast in a finale and it could, it could stack up to like 20 seconds, which is like a big difference in this game. All right, we're on the last map, Dead Air. Dead Air is a good map, smile. It's a very, very fun map that has good skips and is not painful at all, especially not for the bots. Uh, there's gonna be one really big skip on the second map, which thankfully in Left 4 Dead 1 has a really easy backup for, but I'm gonna go for the harder one uh, just once. If there's commons in the way, then I'll not go for it, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, basically, there's like a, a rooftop to rooftop gap that you can make by just bunny hopping. Um, but you need to hit like at least five or six hops in a row. And if we haven't mentioned it before, the bunny hopping in this game is tick perfect at 30 ticks a second. So basically think frame perfect at 30 FPS. Um, so each of the jumps has to be a single input on the right tick. So one thirtieth of a second every time. So five in a row, that's, you know, five times 30. It makes it like really hard. Um, and you have to hit good strikes so you get enough speed and make the jump. It's like a little a bit different than in uh, other Astros games. I guess in other Astros games, it, it's, it's possible that you maintain most of your speed <laughs> even if you like jump uh, a tick like after you land. This is like Bill not important. <laughs> sorry, but, sorry, Bill just got, he got tossed. That was sick. All right, my bad, Bill, bro. But yeah, Left 4 Dead, one, Left 4 Dead B hops. If you don't hit the exact right tick with your jump, you lose nearly all your momentum, unlike in other games. So you have to be really precise with when you hit the jump input, hence no scroll wheel. Oh, there's a tank there. Awesome. This guy. Any climbers? 
Oh, my line was weird. Okay, because of the tank. Can you do me a solid, buddy? Thank you. That works. Three. So I was planning on b-hopping across that, but my line was weird, and so I had to do a little bit of a, a backup strat there. Tank being a nice guy, helping me across. Uh, if you guys are enjoying, I do speedrun this game semi-often. I, I at least do uh, one of the Left 4 Dead games every Friday, where I do a bunch of, I do a marathon of a bunch of different runs. I, I run a lot of different stuff. Currently, I've been running a lot of Resident Evil Village, uh, doing some any percent Village of Shadows. And, uh, but I also run like Devil May Cry, one, two, three, four, and five, Dead Space 2, Fear, Super Hot, like the list goes on, Halo 3, lots of Resident Evil as well. Um, and every Friday I do a marathon of like probably, you know, six or seven games out of that selection. And I always make sure to tow Left 4 Dead in there because it is my favorite speed run. Left 4 Dead 2, that is. Left 4 Dead 1 is definitely up there, though. Excuse me. Don't want to do that section. Just going to jump right over it. And actually, really recently, um, I've organized a... Le uh, hold on. I can't think and be hop at the same time. I organized a... Resident Evil Village, uh, Village of Shadows speedrun tournament. It's going to be on the 5th of June, featuring like a lot of really awesome runners like Distortion 2, QTT6, Zarian, a trance, and a bunch of stuff like that. It's going to be a really good time. If you're interested in that at all, it'd be really cool if you showed up. It's going to be dope. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun time. I, I love running a bunch of different games, a lot of variety. Try to go for stuff that's pushes me is difficult. Left 4 Dead is definitely one of those games. It's some of the one of the hardest games that I run for sure. Left 4 Dead 2 probably being the hardest. Oh, speaking of, I'm throwing. <laughs> oh my god, the witch tossed me. So dead air, we're not gonna do like any speed glitch whatsoever because it's just not worth it. I say that as I just realized I got speed glitched by dying there. Um, so, you know, accidental speed glitch is cool. Yeah, yeah, I intended, intended. I'm trying to go faster, you know? Um, probably gonna ruin all my b-hops for this level, but that's fine. It's not like they were phenomenal anyways. Just, uh, hopefully, uh, trying to make up for it by, you know, making the game run faster, do a little cheating. Oh, hi, tank. Oh, okay. This is... Oh, okay. Excuse me, sir. This is, uh, intended. Mm -hmm. You missed those. He doesn't miss those. Oh my god, is that, like, LeBron James? What a, th what a throw. My guy. I wasn't talking about the tank. I was talking about me throwing this run. That's fine. I mean, that works, too. <laughs> This is why I love Left 4 Dead runs, because because they're terrible. And don't that's why I love a it. good train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you set a generous estimate. <laughs> it's okay though. We got plenty of time. We'll start to probably be like pretty far under estimate. You gotta set a generous estimate for yourself when you run a game that's very volatile. Because sometimes it's not in your control. Hello? Smoker? This is a no smoking zone? I may ask you to vacate the premises? Oh great! What do you know? It's a tank. Who who would have who would have guessed? A, a, ta a tank in Left 4 Dead One? No way! That couldn't be. How unlucky of me. We should have been counting how many tanks show up for this run. We should. Yeah, you know, I have a nickname for myself in my stream. It's a uh, tank on every map waifu. Ah, good name. Uh, back at it again with a tank on every map. Um, and sometimes when it's Left 4 Dead One, it's two tanks on every map waifu. 
Like, we really haven't seen many double tanks. Hopefully, I don't jinx it. Um, Knowing this show, next map. <laughs> yeah, next map. You know, we got, still, we got two maps still. You know, there could still be some tanks. As you can, you know, just, we got time, we got time. The speed glitch helped, I'm sure. I'm sure it saved time. <laughs> oh my god, Lewis, you good, Doug? Man, went flying. This is one of the maps that you can start with speed glitch on. Start with 32 speed glitch. It's like fairly common. 32 is not that bad to B-hop on, actually. It's the 34 and 36 that it gets kind of... Kind of crazy. It honestly wouldn't be too bad if you played the whole game at 32. Oh, look. A tank. What do you know? It's okay. Gaming is occurring. Professional gamer, by the way. Excuse me, sir, could you please die when I shoot you with bullets? Dude, he's gotta be so close to death, right? I swear, if he has expert health, please die, sir. <laughs> oh my god, will you die? Uh, he's gotta have expert health. So since you start the map on expert, there's a chance that if the tank spawns early enough, it's gonna have expert health. Which means he's gonna be, for lack of a better word, tanky. It was a good one. It's good fun. Uh, can you die, dude? This game's intended to be played with by four human players at once, by the way. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> My god. All right. This is fine. Out. Wait, watch out. Waifu. Oh, no. He can't hear the truck. He's got his AirPods in. Oh, okay. We're good. It's fine. This is fine. Now the real tragedy is this, oh no, if there's another tank, wouldn't that be so terrible? There will be. Now we got a witch, we should be fine. Witches and tanks tend to occupy the same spawning locations. So if you get a witch, you're probably not gonna get a tank. Although I wouldn't count my blessings just yet. It is me, so. Also the horde here, you could just totally skip. It's not even a skip. You just, if you just don't walk through the metal detector it just doesn't spawn the horde like you can just walk around it it makes this section like trivially easy it's pretty funny finally or at the finally i mean finale um this one's really cool because it has a pretty unique way to get into a god spot we're actually not going to kill the survivors because we don't need to we're so close to the finale that it's not going to save any time it's actually going to lose this time and we're going to use the interact glitch that we haven't seen for like 50 minutes to get on top of the plane. Because the plane is actually one big god spot if you can get on top of it. We do a little, we do a little beat, beat the turret real fast. Make sure we can get enough height. We do one more. Make sure you kill the bots so the commons don't path to them. It's especially bad if a boomer spits on them. He says as the boomer spits on them. Because boomers actually spawn more common infected. And now, uh, you know, we just chill out. Pause champ with the zombies. She's vibing. All right, now that we're waiting right now, it's probably a good time to ask. You have any uh, shout outs you want to give to anybody? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, this Leopard Dead speedrunning community in general is like really awesome. And uh, if you're at all interested in doing runs, it is very, it's an intimidating run. It's very difficult, but both Leopard Dead 1 and 2 are both phenomenal speed games that are really, really fun. I would definitely uh, give them a try. Join the speedrun discord if you go to Leopard Dead 2 on speedrun.com. You can join the discord from there. Um, lots of really awesome people that are down to help 
uh, you learn the game, figure out what's going on and stuff, even you, you just get better at the game in general. Lots of different categories, really, really cool co-op runs as well as solo uh, with vastly different tech. And uh, yeah, and just shout out to like Eurus for coming to help me commentate, even though it's like six in the morning for him. And uh, shout out to like the other runners like Charlie and Mike and Killer and Acid and all those homies, because uh, wouldn't be here without them and the speedrunning community. It's really awesome. And then, uh, yeah, once again, like, I'm throwing a Village of Shadows Resident Evil 8 speedrun tournament on the 5th of June. Uh, that will be on my channel, the twitch.tv forward slash waifu. I do lots of speedruns and stuff stream almost every day. Um, and so that should be really, really, really cool. Looking forward to that. So if you're at all interested in Resident Evil 8 speedruns, that would be a great time to check them out. He's mad. He's extremely upset. Extremely upset Hunter. Stuck underneath the plane. In before he grabs me, right before we get inside the plane. So also time will end when the screen fades to black and it does the exiting cinematic once I get inside the plane. We're basically just waiting for the comments to despawn and then the tanks to die. So good thing I set myself a generous estimate because this run went terribly. But that's just how uh, Left 4 Dead runs go sometimes. It's almost more entertaining when the run goes horrible, though, because you get to see a little bit of the adaptation going on. You know, it's not all not all perfect and clean. You really get to show, like, how brutal the game can be. Exactly. Also, is this game timed with an uh, in-game timer officially, or does it use uh, real-time? It uses a real-time with a loader over. Hey. So... Yeah, so you're not... The in-game timer only tracks minutes, I believe, or something like that, so it's not super accurate. Excuse me, I want to get inside the plane. Also, I get to answer my favorite question once again. Uh, the run is indeed live for chat is pure report, because I saw that happen in chat. Okay, GG. <laughs> hey, let us know when time comes up. That's time, yeah. Hey. So, underestimate, terrible run, but it was a good time. So, hey, thanks dub's for a dub. me. <laughs> a dub's a dub, boss. A dub man. is a dub. That is, in fact, a small dub, boss man. Exactly. But it's still a dub. Now, for the more <laughs> important question if people want to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Twitch.tv forward slash waifu. I'm on waifu runs on every other platform. YouTube, I make video essays and stuff, uh, Twitter, all that noise. And uh, yeah, the, if you like Left 4 Dead runs, if you like me, if you like Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, any of that stuff, definitely give me a follow. Come hang out. I stream like every day. Again, speedrun marathons every Friday. A bunch of different games. And the really, really big thing that I've been planning for months is that, that tournament, Village of Shadows, Resident Evil 8, on uh, June 5th, starting at 11 a.m. MST. It's going to be a really good time. Lots of cool people involved with that. I'm really excited. Uh, inspired by a lot of the stuff that you guys do at GDQ. So thanks right. for making the community awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Always fun thanks stuff. Yeah, it was great having you. It was a fun run to see. Uh, before we do uh, finish up for the night, uh, anything else you want to add in? No, dude. Thanks for having an awesome event. You're doing really cool stuff for the horror community, so we appreciate it. Oh, hey, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, this was definitely a fun episode of Speedruns from the Crypt here. I do want to say thank you all for showing up. Uh, thank you for the runners. Thank you, Waifu. Uh, it was always it's always fun to see Left 4 Dead, also, especially seeing Left 4 Dead 2 as much as I have. I kind of wanted to look into one, and yeah, it was a good time with that one. Anyway, uh, that being said, it is now the end of our show here today. I do hope that you've enjoyed all these spooky hospital games. It was a fun theme to look into as a natural horror trope. Uh, as well, uh, as always, uh, if you want to know more about any of the GDU Hotfix shows, information can be found on gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. As well, if you want to just know more up-to-date stuff about any of the Speedruns from Crypt shows, I've been your host, Ictisis. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Ictisis or Twitter at Ictisis underscore Twitch. I usually kind of post updates and hints for uh, future episodes or just kind of talk about the general theme I've planned. I'll just say for the next episode that we're going to have in a couple weeks, it's going to be a bit deeper than usual. That'll be my, my, my hint to that one. 
Uh, as well, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be having the first step, and it'll be an improv race of Super Mario Bros. 3. So, I'm see Hobbs and Keys with that. Anyway, we're going to be going over to a raid, so I do want to say thank you all again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful night, and I would love if you would join us. Have a great night, everyone!